Hello everybody and welcome back to the KCM. It's time for week six. We've got an insane lineup here today. So let's jump into game number one. Hero versus Mini. Let's go. Oh man, this lineup is sick. Sharp, Light, Mind, Bisu, Snow, Mini, Action, Queen, Hero. We were just discussing if there was any possibility of like a better lineup than this. There are some, you know, key people who are missing, but this is probably as sick as it gets, right, Shun? Yeah, I don't think you can really get better than this. You could make the argument for someone like Best, maybe replacing Bisu or Mini, but you wouldn't want to do that. You've got Snow and Mini, they're already great at PvT, and uh, Bisu is a PvZ Slayer, so you want to have him in here to help deal with this killer lineup as well. And uh, Hero is a very talented Zerg, very underrated Zerg, despite being so uh, like well-known already. Uh, he can pretty much do everything under the sun um, to to the highest level. He's one of the most well-rounded Zergs out there. And then Mind is like the brain box of the, the, the scene. Like, you put someone like Mind and Sharp together into one person, you've basically got Prime Flash. Yeah, Sharp just so quick with the mechanics. We've been watching a lot of him uh, on the ladder battle side of things, but it's really nice to see him here in KCM and... We're really looking forward to his performance in ASL as well. And Mini actually going to send out two probes here. Interesting. Going to go ahead and check the uh, around the map. Maybe expecting a uh, like a early pool here. I'm really glad we got Mini out first, by the way. Really, really glad we got Mini out here first because he seems to tilt if his team's not doing well. And it's very nice to have him. Uh, starting out here, just completely fresh, uh, no emotions. He can just play his game, I think, from this position. Yeah, it's great that we've got him coming out first. He's a very emotionally driven player. And it looks like with this double scout, he was maybe looking to punish a hatch first or deflect an early pool. But uh, he's going to be last scouting hero, so I don't think he's going to be able to make uh, any benefit of these early scouts. So slight, small economic deficit, I would say, for him, which will delay the Nexus just a little bit, but makes him very safe against any early potential cheese and also maybe allows him to punish hero and he did go for this hatchery first as well. So if Hero's top right or bottom left, that would have allowed Mini to maybe consider a cannon rush. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a cannon rush yet on this map, but you may be right there. Maybe uh, Mini has something figured out for this map for Citadel. Uh, a little cheesy position, a little tight corner that he can sneak some cannons into. And unfortunately, it's not going to be able to to bring it out this game, but uh, maybe that's going to be in his mind for uh, upcoming series and in the upcoming ASL as well. Um, very interesting always to see, you know, where Protoss players, the pro Protoss players, uh, end up throwing down cannon rushes because it's so uncommon these days. It's so kind of figured out by the Zerg players. They're so good at deflecting them. It's really interesting to see when, you know, new maps come out, if the Protoss are ever going to be able to, you know, win with a cannon rush on that map, if it's going to be possible. Yeah, and by the way, we have a horizontal entrance to Mini's uh, expansion here, and he's building cannons right up against the wall, so Hero might go for a 973 quick bust here with uh, just speed only Hydras, maybe four to six Hydras, and mass speed link could just bust down the front here. And one thing I would like to note is that Mini's gateway got delayed by about 10 seconds because of Hero's scouting drone. And that's actually a big deal because it's not only slowing down the Zealot camp, but it's also the tech timing of the core going down is also a little bit uh, delayed now. Some good harassment by Hero. Usually it's the probe that's harassing the, the Zerg player, but it will get some slowdowns here uh, on the side of Mini with just the drone. Always nice. Trying to track down this probe here. And he sees the lair. Will he cancel and throw down a Igelus Den? That is a move that you can try to pull off, but with only two lings, I don't think he'll be able to deny scouting. So he is going to let that continue to morph uh, in the natural. And one ling going to block the entrance to the main here. Try to create some sort of, you know, unknown here on the map for Mini. Ooh, he had an opportunity to maybe surround and kill that probe, but missing that. Does have quite a few lings out here, though, to catch this first zealot. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, 
I think the reason why these players are choosing not to say like cancel their lair and go for the den is because you also don't know if Mini like r clicked outside of the base and then right clicked back onto the mineral. So even if you do block the the ramp with say like two fallings, the the probe can still get inside and just can reconfirm the the scout inside the base again. So it's really difficult to commit to a hydra den when the probe's already inside the base because they can just right click out and come back in again or send the second probe back in from the the, the vision of the mineral. So it can be really tough to pull the trigger on that if you're not sure mm, absolutely and we've got the pro back inside the main base once again it's confirming everything that's going on here even harassing a drone that drone is getting quite low you do need to bring some links to defend that hero he's gonna come around one more time trying to get what one or two more shots on does not manage to get that good job by hero protecting his drones here not losing any so far and producing the bare minimum number of links i think to overwhelm these zealots completely and make sure that they can't get any damage on the map. Yeah, for a moment there I thought maybe Hero was considering a four hatch Hydra play because of the timings, um, but I don't think he feels confident enough going for that here. It's cross map and uh, I feel I feel like he probably is worried about being scouted by the Corsair soon. Mini's a very talented play, he's not going to just like fall over to a, a pre-storm Hydra bus timing I don't think so. I think he's wisely going to just go into a macro game from here, and it does suit his playstyle more. He's a very macro-centric player, despite being able to do pretty much any build under the sun. This is uh, a build that is very popular on ladder right now, having the second uh, gateway here in the natural and building a lot of zealots early on, hitting a little timing here with about eight zealots, something around there. Um, two DTs going to come out here on the map as well, so... He's going to have some pressure. This is this is classic mini, actually. Building a bunch of DTs, a bunch of Zealots early game with some Corsairs, trying to get some damage uh, rolling somewhere, trying to get some chaos going that the, the Zerg player is just not able to handle. But Hero's looking pretty buttoned up here. He's got lots of Lings ready. He's got a few Hydras here. The, the uh, DT going to take some damage. He gets a surround. Oh, great pick off on that first DT. That's an amazing pickoff from Hero, and yeah, Mini's desperately trying to create a ladder made from chaos in which to climb, but so far Hero is just dismantling him. He's managed to sneak past this other ridgeline, just barely not getting this round on that. I really love this active anti-DT play from Hero. He's definitely prepared for Mini shenanigans this game, and he's got a great game plan so far, and just the bare minimal amount of units needed to uh, fend off any kind of shenanigans that Mini can throw his way for the time being. Mini's going now into high Templars. He's got very early Templars and Storm, usually you will not see Templars and Storm finished until around about, say, 8 minutes 30 or so. But Mini's got this ready and kicking like at 7 minutes 20. He's going to have a lot of Storms available in his uh, infantry force. And so far, though, Hero's doing a great job of just keeping these Dark Templars back and screening any attempt from the Mini, though, uh, looks like he's going to be going into the main base now. I'm not sure if those are two Corsairs. Yeah, two Corsairs are just going to be floating around, sharking around to see if he can catch any of these Overlords that are currently unguarded because Mini, uh, because uh, uh, Hero's been so active on the map with these uh, Hydras that he doesn't have any defense right now for these Overlords to his main so many seeing if he can pick off one or two of these but so far it looks like great response from hero in both regards both defensive and actively defending against these um dark demons out on the map yeah he's got the overlord speed done now so he's probably going to be able to save all of these overlords not a huge commitment to these corsairs and he gets the dt as well so he'll be able to bring everything together to defend this zealot timing attack the zealot timing is not as strong as it would have been because quite a few of the zealots were picked off he can break off one zealot and start to hit this drone line though Hero not having all of his hydras together. Some of them way over in the top right hand corner have now been brought back. He's going to run into his uh, Sim City here as more hydras pop out. The defense should be fine. He should be able to hold this off, but he's lost a few drones already. And this is some of the chaos that Mini was looking for. But look at all the zealots just melting here. That was not the engagement that Mini was hoping. And look at all the drones popping out. Hero, really confident that he could have finished that off with just the Hydras that he had. Making a full round of drones, he's going to have an amazing economy to follow this up. Yeah, and he's showing such textbook understanding of ZVP. Making a big round of drones just as you're about to win a fight is just like 101. And now he's going to just explode in his uh, economic prowess, take a fourth base, and just really try and explode out onto the map and prevent Mini from having any chance of securing a third or fourth. But Mini, trying to be active with these zealots out on the map like you should be, but there's just too many Hydras. There's a critical mass of Hydras, and it's really tough to come back from that. And he's going to be intercepting these zealots from the eastern flank as well. Mini's forced to split them up into two groups. 
these four going to the north, two to the south. He's going to save the two to the south, but these four at the top can be picked off if he, at least one or two of them may be dying here. Or at least he's getting a lot of their HP shaved off. Yeah, he's going to try to run by into the main with these two zealots that broke off from the group. Try to get as much damage as he can. This is very hard to handle, but Hero, just so adept at handling these situations, going to pick off that zealot immediately, pulling away the drones. Looks like he loses one, but won't be getting many more kills than that. There it is. The zealot falls. Damn, Hero is so good, but did I just see Mutalus popping? I think yep. that Mini might have seen that as well. I think he did. Um, I, and what's really strange is that as I was looking at those eggs, my brain just went, Muta switch, and then the Muta's popped. And um, yeah, it's a great time in the Muta switch. There's not enough Sairs out here to deal with the, the threat of the Mutas right now. And look at these. He's got all the way up to 10 Mutalisks. So we can just start one-shotting these High Templars, and that's going to prevent any storms um, being able to deal with these Hydras. So even if he does storm these Mutalisks, it doesn't matter. Picking off this High Templar at the third is really critical right now. There's not enough storms to deal with this Hydra threat that's going to be coming in soon. And he's going to try and ward away any of our Templars the, the beautiful um, skirmishing with these two um, Corsairs, though, are going to be warding away those mutas to the east on this high ground area. And now he comes back in anyway and snipes the High Templar. Both Corsairs can be taken out too. And now these goons are kind of like left undefended and unable to deal with this Hydra Muta threat. Oh my god, Hero is looking so good right here. Getting that first Templar snipe was just so easy. We have this kind of ramp at the front that doesn't allow you to see it's a uh, it's kind of blocking the vision and he's coming in for some more kills great storms from mini but he needs to save some of these for the hydra great storm on top of most of the hydra but the hydra here already uh, on the other side of that vision blocker and more hydras coming in as well he's gonna pick off this last templar and a bunch of dragoons here there's no zealot to kind of buffer for this a lot of the dragoons are stuck on the outside of this wall the cannons are not going to be helping them here and even with these two cannons i mean there's just way too many hydra the templar that are popping out soon are not going to have energy to storm and more and more hydras are spilling forward here he's going to take a moment to break down this wall but Mini is on the ropes here. He's not going to be able to hold on for much longer. With just Dragoons popping out, Hydra will be perfect for breaking this natural and taking this game home. Here we go. Hydra's coming forward here. And behind this, just massive splotches of red moving into position. A few Zealots going to pop out at the last moment, but a, some good micro here from Hero as he pushes forward. There's the two Templar, but they do not have energy. All the Dragoons are going to die before they have that storm. Hydra's pushing forward here for the win, and there's nothing that Mini can do. GG is called, and he taps out. Hero, perfect. Absolutely perfect. ZVP there. Hero coming off of basically a perfect win there in that first game. So impressed with his ability to handle the shenanigans of Mini. And Mini looking almost impotent in that game. Unable to do really anything against the might of Hero. Now, Mind coming out here on Blitz Y. Can he take a win against this guy after that performance i wouldn't be too confident yeah i mean it could be scary going up against likes of hero now this map does work for him just a little bit um it's very difficult for zergs to secure a third here you are tempted to take this natural third on the kind of catwalk area but it's very easy for terrans to come down that line and just bust you so it can be a little bit tricky to get the third gas online here, so we might see a little bit of shenanigans out of Hero to kind of control the state of the game, maybe even seeing a 2 hatch or 2.5 hatch build out of him to kind of keep the flow under control and prevent mine from establishing any kind of dominance on this catwalk early on, but we'll have to wait and see. But the likes of mind against Hero, I mean, he has the smarts, but does he have the mechanics to keep up with someone like Hero? Well, I think the map is going to play a big factor here for sure. Uh, mind with his game understanding maybe he can find a way to abuse this map and as you were saying it is difficult with the uh the third gas getting that online i don't know maybe the center left might be a good option i haven't really thought about it too much but do you think that maybe center left could be a bit defendable it is a small choke and it's just a single choke whereas bottom left has two chokes and they're quite large and then the catwalk is like a high ground but it has a very wide area to defend 
Well, the, the largest issue with expanding anywhere else besides this natural third is the inability to keep track of the Terran bio. So it's very easy for the Terran bio just to show up at your door at the third base and just snipe the hatchery when your mutants are distracted somewhere else. So mm. you really want to kind of keep the the base the base layout as linear as possible so that you don't get blindsided by just a random bio move out. And even someone like Mong will send like a small like like auxiliary force of bio out onto the map and try and run around the entire map just to like snipe your third base and it can be really tricky to catch that as zerg if it's in an awkward position that makes sense we got the first marine headed across the map here but we're gonna be starting our command center behind this uh not going to be putting on too much pressure but does want to force at least four lings out of hero here early being a little bit annoying with the harassment on this uh mineral patch here and the first marine arrives but two drones just going to bail out of the natural fight from the high ground here getting some really good damage from these drones onto the scv you're not going to be able to make a bunker here if your scv is in red health already so hero can be pretty confident that there won't be a bunker coming online now and with just four lings out that should be enough to hold off everything the subtle back and forth between the Terran and Zerg in the early game is has been well walked here by Hero. And we're just going to see mine pull all the way back. He's trying to avoid walking past this Overlord here. Keeping a bit of a, a, an unknown on the map for Hero for now. But eventually he will retreat to that wall. Yeah, general rule of thumb in Terran versus Zerg, you want to keep your bio, even at these stages of the game, uh, hidden from view because it just keeps that like element of what's going to happen in the Zerg's mind. And that may just force an extra pair of Zerglings, which is not one less drone or maybe even a creep colony, which is even a bit, bit bigger value. So in this early game, mine did basically deny a little bit of mining time from Hero, but yeah, he didn't really accomplish much besides that. And with the bare minimum of four links being made, Hero's in great shape right now. Where are we going to go from here? Well, Mind has his eBay down already. He's going for an early plus one uh, timing. He's going to have a little bit of a later stim here with less Marines than that two barracks. So he won't be able to force uh, too many Sunkins out, but he might be able to force one if he actually moves out. It is a little bit dangerous, though, to move out early with the plus one build. Because you can quickly get overwhelmed by Ling. But it's very common these days for even, you know, a single barracks uh, Terran player who's going for that early plus one to try and move out to at least create a little bit of pressure. The follow-up going to be four barracks here. And it's a very strong build uh, with the early plus one four barracks. You're going to have so many Marines out with a lot of power, a lot of strength. Right as that plus one finishes and range is done. The Marines are going to be really, really scary out here on the map. Yeah, I do I do kind of agree with um, Hero's choice in this bottom left base as well. I think that's the only choice, really. Even though it's awkward at the two entrances, I feel like the, the catwalk is, is too too obvious of a bad choice. And I feel like like you, the middle left, like you were suggesting, is just also a little bit awkward for other reasons. So I feel like the bottom left base is the only real true course of action for Hero in this current game state. So I'm really happy he's elected to do that. I think Mind will go all the way up to, yeah, he's going to way up to, uh, I think, four racks. Yeah, he's going to four racks, and he's going to, um, that allows him to put on a lot of pressure out onto the map. With three racks, you can kind of, like, hold your own against the Zerg, but with four, you can actually start to come out onto the map and really start to challenge this sort of muter air, air control dominance that uh, the Zergs so often try to go for. And he didn't try to push across the map here at all, so not forcing any sunken colonies but not risking his early bioforce so he's got a significant bioforce here as the next few racks are coming online he's gonna really start to pump up that number but how are his mechanics here i mean if hero has any uh, openings here he's gonna start to really rip apart this bioforce and uh, taking down mines bio is gonna give him a lot of control out on the map there's a factory coming down immediately after these barracks are done Mine going to begin that transition as he scans the bottom left here. He sees what he's up against. But well, is he going to be able to... Enough, no? Go ahead. Oh, interestingly enough, that's a 6 minute 30 factory. So if Hero's not on time with... If Hero's not exceptionally crisp with his hive timings, there's actually a possibility of a tank push here. 
Mm. You think that might might be what we're seeing right now? Is a, a possibility of a tank push? I guess there it, it's here, difficult yeah. to to defend bottom left, right? Bottom left is going to be really wide open. Yeah, I think a tank push is very likely here, and especially given the fact that he's got four racks straight into a factory like this, makes me really think he wants to at least set up for a tank push. It's just going to be a matter of whether Hero can identify that and like make an earlier hive timing. I doubt he will. I think we're going to see a tank push here, and I think it might work. Mm, yeah, I don't see a Queen's Nest at all. He's really focusing on getting out the, the Mutalis numbers necessary to deal with this huge bio force that's moving along the left-hand side of the map. He's going to bring out... His mutas here, he's got more than that full 11 group. Some of these are getting quite low, though. He'll have to switch out some uh, high HP mutas for that low one. Bring them all together once again and try to fight this. But yeah, he is not making that transition right now. And he's just going to have only muta here to fight. Lings are coming out, though. If he eliminates all of the bio, you're not going to be able to do much with a tank push if you just don't have the muscle of the bio to back that up. And look at that. Everything gets taken out. Mine's going to have to run home with his tail between his legs. This uh, tank push not looking as strong anymore. Although the... Uh, it really does seem like that's going to be the case. He is going to push with tank soon. Uh, yeah, the hive timing is, is crisp enough that I think he'll be okay, though, because he did swallow up a lot of the bio. There will, there will still be a window for him to punish. Yeah, he's definitely still going to try and punish the Zerg, and there is a window to do so, but losing that much bio is going to really slow down his efforts, and Hero's taking a little bit out the window sails. He's going to come back yet again with these mutiling, threatening more stabs on this bio force, shaving off as many Marines as possible with plus one finished on these muters. They are doing a lot of damage right now, and there's only two medics, so they don't have enough energy to keep all these Marines alive so as the as the terran player here sometimes you even have to just like pretend to stim and only stim like one marine to make the muters run away because you don't want to stim your entire pack of marines or they'll just keep draining the energy over and over again all right well coming in once again dealing so much damage here to the marine medic ball and he's got a lot of ling over here in the left hand side he's ready to dive upon this if this is lost if this bio group is lost for mine I don't have much confidence that he can push with tank at all uh, before the defilers are out and ready to defend that. So Mind here does need to keep this alive. He's got to keep stimming and defending these marines. Keep them alive for now. But uh, the more stims that go down, the better off Hero is. He's forcing out a lot of stim here. He's going to come over and start to harass some of these turrets, but... I mean, he's just checking what is here, and he sees the tanks in the natural. He knows exactly what's coming, so he can start to prepare. And, and yet, because he doesn't have the critical mass of bio that he needs, this isn't as scary as it could be. He will have a good irradiate to help deal with this muta flock, but as long as Hero splits correctly, um, I just need to split. He, honestly, he can just chill. He's only got, like, um, I, I think... Right now, he's got this big lurker switch coming. Yeah, he's got this massive train of lurkers coming up from the bottom. So even if these muters got dealt with, that's okay because we can still slow this push down enough because the bio is small. So I think Hero wants to kind of come out and catch this as far out onto the map as possible and slow it all the way down. So oh, here's the radiate and a beautiful split as well. So I really don't feel like Hero is in any danger of dying at the moment. Wow, how did he do that? He pulled the very bottom mutalisk out of the stack the perfect one the one that was irradiated really really well done by him now backing away to this high ground uh mine is going to rotate over towards the natural here two lurkers have been sent out to catch reinforcements we've got some scourge ready to catch this vessel if it comes forward but this is going to be a, a, a kind of a desperate gambit here can hero hold on right now he's gonna run forward with all of the lurkers burrowing right on the front he's gonna be able to pick off this vessel it looks like do we have the scan? I don't see a scan coming down and everything gets obliterated. Ouch. Brutal damage there. Looks like these are on hold position. They didn't actually stop yeah. the Marines. Oh, maybe they did uh, deal some damage to these Marines. We do have two more tanks. They're going to be picked off as well. Lurkers running up on top of this. The mechanics of Hero really showing through this game. Wow, he's playing on fire right now. I'm always so impressed to watch Hero play. He, he rarely underperforms. There are a few games that he's had that have been disappointing, but more often than not, he's performing out of his mind, and pun intended. Yeah, he is showing us his power right now and his uh, conviction here to win ASL seems to be strong. He hasn't been able to make it that far uh as of yet but he's consistently in top four for a long time maybe this is his season maybe he can put things together here and actually get 
a win in ASL. That would be massive. I don't think that mine's going to be able to stop him, though. Especially not, definitely not this game. But I don't know if he, you know, he can take him down in the ASL either. This, the, his mechanics are looking so incredibly good. Even on this kind of wacky map, this wild map here. Able to get a fourth base online. This is crazy. A hero doing a great job. I mean, just look at the map right now. It's like a virus. He's got vision everywhere. Nothing's going to catch him unawares. There's no way even, say, like, a, a random dropship could, like, win the game for Mind here. He's, he's wouldn't even be able to sneak it in. Like, nothing would come back for Mind here. Now he doesn't get pounced upon by this big force of Lurker Ling. And the high ground advantage, he can't really retreat down this ramp as well. It's going to be really tough for him. He's going to try and get a best trade as possible, but that's not going to amount to much. So far, Hero is just absolutely all over him. Currently, still ahead of supply of the Terran player, which is indicative of a huge Zerg advantage. And now with the Dark Swarm coming up just outside the natural expansion of mine, the writing is on the wall for the Terran. He's going to desperately try and hold this off, but without an irradiate for this Defiler, it's only a matter of time before Hero just inches his way closer and closer to the rally point of mine and contains him. Mine's going to desperately try and get some kind of map control by rotating around to the west, keeping some units out on the map to be able to have some kind of active presence and maybe prevent uh, any for the form of reinforcements getting up here. But it doesn't matter unless he irradiates his Defiler. Finally does irradiate on that Defiler, but he's going to get another Darkswarm down just outside these bunkers. Yeah. Oh, great pick off there with the one lurker coming forward. He manages to get that. Some Marines trying to get that uh, position here to block any further reinforcements. But Crackling is already done. Some fire bats pop out to clear this. So he will survive for now. Mine's staying alive here. But we've already got the fourth gas online. Ultra is going to be popping out very, very soon. He's had that Ultralis Cavern for a little while, so you know that Chitinous Plating has got to be nearly complete here. And Firebats are not going to cut it against Ultras with Chitinous Plating. He's going to need something more. He's going to need a huge Bioball. Maybe a couple of extra factories out here pumping tanks and stuff. Oh, a huge wave of Scourge. He might be able to pick off all of these Science Vessels. We'll see, but great defense so far from mine. But this is going to get crazy here. With all of these Scourge coming forward, a ton of Ling and Lurker on this high ground. Can he hold off? This is kind of an awkward position for Hero to hold, but with the high ground ramp, I guess he's going to be able to hold on for now. Yeah, mine's being very diligent though. He has been scanning ahead a lot, so he does identify those Scourge ahead of time, and these are the kind of things that will prevent him from just getting bowled over by Hero, but... It's only a matter of time before Hero might get the better of him here. And with this huge round of fire bats, it gives him some ability to fight under swarms. And if there's only like one or two lurker under swarm, he can still kill that with the bats. So it is a, still a threat here for Hero to have to deal with. He's going to maybe go on top of this defiler. Does get the dark swarm down. But with all these swarms of fire bats, there is a chance here for uh, Mine to make something work. There's a small contingency coming into the third base location to keep Hero distracted as well. But we'll see how much damage he can do. So far getting on top of the drone line. There is a Nidus Canal here. If you can shut that down as well, that's going to be really annoying for Hero. He's going to be borrowing some workers underneath this swarm and killing up, killing most of the, the Marines, but there are still four Fire Bats um, that can uh, run into the main base in a moment here. It may be really annoying, so Hero's still not out of the woods, but has done a good job of defending this so far. Yeah, that is crazy. you got to chop that up to, I think, just the, cr the, the wildness of the map here. Hero was really struggling to figure out where Mind was going with this attack. He was threatening all three different locations at the same time the natural the fourth and the third and you know hero trying to juggle that the best that he could and in the end mind attacks the natural the lurkers pop through and try to defend but now hero is really on the back foot here and not having defiler in time he's got an ultra ready to fight here one ultra gonna be enough to push things back for now but for how long really we needed a filer out here to defend and look at this ultra's gonna come forward here they're gonna get knocked down there's way too good of a position here for mine the position that was working against him when it was uh fighting against lurkers is now working for him against the ultra ling we are gonna get one dark swarm down here hero just barely gonna hold on right now man his tenacity is really something yeah, by the skid of his teeth, he's pulling this together. But here comes the Lotto dropships, though. Mine wants to keep the issue pressed, and there is an overlord to spot this, so he has, he has the ability to prepare for this, but he's not paying attention just yet. I think he might have seen that on the mini. Here comes, he's distracted, plaguing these uh, vessels right now. Oh, he does notice the dropship, but he's got a handful of links to kind of delay that while some units make their way into the main to defend this. He might be in trouble here. He's got some links streaming into the main to help defend but links will not deal with this. There's bats with this drop, so these links are going to be somewhat ineffective unless he gets good surrounds. 
Yeah, this is this is how a lot of Zerg players will die. This is how I often die on the ladder. Is the uh, things start to get a little bit too crazy. There's a you know armies bashing down a bunch of different doors, and then the dropship comes into the back and clears everything out. And here is going to be no different. Hero really struggling right now. He does have one Ultra that popped out in the main. And that's enough to hold off all of these Fire Bats. Fire Bats are really not good against Ultra. They barely do any damage. Basically tickling them with their fire. But Ultra so good against Drop. We've got almost nothing though left for Hero right now. Look at how few drones we've got. We've got none in the main. None in the natural. Mine's just not letting him make drones, and he's just constantly applying pressure to the Zerg over and over again. Every lava must be dumped into something, Scourge, Ultras, Lings, or he would just die, and now he can't even get his economy back in uh, to high gear anymore, and he's like sh just struggling on the ropes, trying to find his balance, but his ears are just spinning right now, and mine is just jabbing away constantly, and he's looking for that knockout punch. Uh, there's no defiler here. The knockout punch may be coming soon for ultras. Probably not going to be enough to stop this force. That's so many marines bashing away at this. But with the dark swarm, he does manage to hold on. He just needs to stay underneath this spell uh, for a little bit here and try to find his balance. Pushing forward with the ultra, picking off some of these uh you know straggling marines here is a really good move but there's more marines heading across this catwalk he's going to continue this pressure here not picking off any uh vessels importantly we have no none of the vessels getting picked off there and the dropships are still active somewhere there they are here in the natural he can continue to drop in different locations the bottom left would be a really good choice though everything had to be pulled away from that bottom left to try to defend the main and the third base the natural being under threat as well there's those side vessels with almost no hp one hydra could kill so many vessels here but he just doesn't have any anti-air here comes some scourge to start to clean those up but another drop making its way into the main base is this where hero falls apart oh scourge here picking that off getting rid of that dropship is massive that's huge. The fact that mine didn't unload that in a line. He was just too distracted with this little fight skirmish at the third base location. That's huge for, for Hero there. That's a big win. P picking off that dropship, not only denying the further drops from that dropship, but also killing all the units inside. That cost efficiently is a big win for the Zerg right now. He needs as much cost efficiency as he can muster. And with Defiler Tech, he's going to be able to get more and more. So and they come a flock of Scourge to try and pick off a few of these vessels. Looks like he's only going to get one of them for his efforts, though. Does connect with one of the other Scourge, making that another viable target later on but with these ultras coming around being super annoying he might be able to deny mining at this third base location and just siphon off enough of the production of a uh, mind which will prevent him from being able to just keep macroing out of these like eight or ten barracks that he's got and that will be a huge win for hero because now he can actually start to get a critical mass out on the map once more look at the supply starting to favor the zerg yet again another dropship into the main base we be putting on some pressure but that's not going to be good enough um looks like hero's going to deal with that cost efficiently as well with some units waiting in the wings as well just to deal with that and um, just gobble those units up and now now looking so strong in this game ahead of supply this game's hard to call because it's going back and forth so often but i think hero now is finally starting to get handle things once more yeah as the terran player starts to dry out here he's got no real mining aside from the th the, the the third base but look at this big big attack here with the uh irradiate the the uh, eraser trick you're gonna deal a lot of damage he only had two scourge to deal with that so he's gonna lose a bunch of drones once again but I think this base is going to end up going down. We don't have any reinforcements here. All the Marines are going to fall. And there's too many Ultras here. GG. Wow. G -G. Mind was not able to get more bases online there. And he failed to continue to grow. Hoping for that knockout punch. But it never came. Getting the clamper here from KCM. Hero playing on fire today. Really beautiful, beautiful two first games here this week. Well, nowhere near perfect that last game. Hero just barely scraping by against Mind. So much chaos in that game created by our Terran player, but Hero barely able to stay on top of all of it and come out ahead. Now here, going up against Bisu. This wow, would be... Win record. 73%? Holy. Is that from Bisu? Bisu, Bisu. That's Bisu's PBZ. That's nuts, dude. That's nuts. Wow. Yeah, that is wild. The king of PVZ. 
Um, maybe the, the, the definitely the hardest matchup for Protoss is versus Zerg and Bisu just able to maneuver that better than anyone else out there. The best of the best. And he's gonna be he's the OGP. Yeah, he is, and he's gonna be sending his probe in the right direction here. I'm gonna be seeing heroes uh, build and maybe even denying him from getting this uh, 12 hatch here, which it appears that he's going for right now. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Hero is doing the wise thing of hiding the second Overlord, but that doesn't matter because Mini's just going to chill here anyway. And Bisu. he might get the block. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Bisu um, is going to chill here anyway. And what's beautiful about this mind game is that Hero has no idea. Like, I think Bisu is going to really blindside him here. This is like a really big meta game that we're seeing. Ooh, this is dirty. This is really dirty. Yeah, he came in, he saw the creep, and just backed away. Assuming that there was going to be a hatchery here. He was right in that assumption. He's building a pylon back behind this natural. He sees the probe. He has no idea that there's a second probe here already. This is such oh God, a mind so game impressed. from Bisu. I'm so impressed saying right now. Bisu is showing us like another layer to PVZ where it's like, okay, it doesn't matter if the if you don't confirm that they're going um, nine pool or not. You can just like, you know, see the creep, rotate round, hide the probe. Uh, don't have to deny the hatchery going down. Instead, just go for a cannon rush and you'll, you'll feel fine because you can send the second probe, second probe to make sure there's no lings on the way and you can build cannons back home if you need to. This is crazy what we're seeing right now. Bisu is like kind of reinventing PVZ, even though he was the one that originally designed it. This is very cool. This is all uh, kind of made possible by the fact that he uh, had the first scout. He had the initial scout and he saw the, um, he saw the creep without revealing the probe. A very cute tech play here. Keeping all the drones alive, but the cannon's going to be already hitting this. Uh, oh, and he can hit this. Can he hit the... Uh, the sunken yeah he can hit the sunken here we're gonna have to cancel and re-establish that there's no way oh god he gets a kill on a drone wow. here as well this is really frustrating stuff for uh hero right now gonna be losing this sunken colony look at how quickly the health gets dropped off of that all he needs to do is bring it down to 100 and it will die the moment that it pops out some Ling's going to come forward here, starting to deal damage to this cannon in the front. He's going to kill the cannon in the back, too, it looks like. With the Sunken finishing up, is this the perfect hold from Hero? It's the perfect hold from Hero, even though Bisu's doing some of the most beautiful manual target firing I've seen of a cannon, by the way. Like, amazing how precise he was in switching focus fire back and forth between that Sunken and the Ling's, keeping the Sunken down to 100 HP, so it would be one shot as soon as it pops. Bisu is showing such exemplary level of control, and Hero is still somehow managing to navigate and hold this with pretty pretty high levels of efficiency i'm impressed by both sides right now saying it's hard not to like this game yeah this is um this is some really high level stuff here guys really glad to have you all here to join us for these games this is this is fantastic and uh, by the way happy valentine's day out there to everybody uh, we're casting this on valentine's day we love you we appreciate you i hope you're uh with some of your loved ones today and if you're not Thank you for being with us anyway. Uh, you are appreciated and loved. And this is going to heat up here quickly. We need probes in this wall right now. Bisu going to have to hold on against this. Ling's coming in right now. He actually opens the wall for a second, but falling back here. Probes are going to get targeted. How many probes can he get? Three probes already trying to run by here. Going to get another probe. It looks like great blocking from Bisu as the Ling's try to make their way up the ramp. All of them will be killed. Great hold wow. here by Bisu, but evening out that uh, worker lead a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's really good. It's a good hold for Bisu, but that's really good for Hero. He just reset the worker count so much, and he's actually now going to be taking a small lead in um, economy right now because he killed enough probes that he kind of reset things. But one thing we could say is that with this uh, Creep Conley and the natural expansion of Hero, the Sunken he made earlier, that will slow mining down just a little bit and prevent some optimal mining. So you could argue that still Bisu's quite handsomely in the lead, but on paper right now, um, Hero's looking pretty good. I wonder if he's going to kill this sunken colony here if he decides that it's just not worth it maybe he wants to keep it um to help him with this uh first zealot or these first few zealots that are going to start to annoy him here he does have to make a few more lings you know if he hadn't sent those lings in to trade out for some probes he wouldn't have had to build extra lings here to 
you know, uh, deal with these first zealots. He would have already had lings out, but, you know, he's going to have to build these lings. He's going to have to trade poorly here with the zealots as well because he wasn't able to get them out in time uh, to, you know, prevent the, the positioning here from Bisu. But, you know, Bisu is going to be sending more and more zealots on the map here. He's going to be looking for more better positions here. He's already traded out very efficiently. Hero building the right number of lings, though, I think. And dealing with this pretty darn efficiently he is supply blocked right now, so can't really produce anything at the moment. Might take, be forced to take kind of a bad trade here uh, since he can't really produce. There we go. He does pop an overlord. And look at this great micro here from Bisu taking out so many links and he just doesn't have any over here uh, to finish these off. An extra hatch in the main and a Hydralis Den is done. We will not be seeing, you know, a... Uh, uh, Mutilus follow-up. Oh, he gets one drone. He's going to get a second one. Not quite getting wow. that second one, but really, really good targeting there by Bisu. I think Hero is going to be forced to do a four hatch Hydra now. I think he's got uh, enough drones have been sniped. Um, I guess he doesn't have to. He could just pump drones right now, but he, he might want to consider the possibility of just doing a four hatch Hydra bust because of just how much damage he's taken and how destabilized he is. Um, he doesn't have to do that, but it would be a good way of dealing with the current game state. Give him enough Hydras to deal with the Corsair Zealot threat and also be able to apply pressure to Bisu and force a lot of cannons at the very least and maybe hit him uh, pre-storm. It'd be a viable way of dealing with this current game state. And he is going to be killing his own sunken like we were talking about earlier. But now he's gunning down these overlords. I really feel like Hero should have gone 4-hatch Hydra because he would have had enough Hydras to deal with these Corsairs. But he's tried to pump out a few more drones to make up for his situation and gone into a 5th hatch. I think this is a mistake from Hero going for a 5th hatch and trying to play a normal game. I think he should have gone 4-hatch Hydra to deal with these Corsairs. Well, he's going to lose three overlords here. That's really going to supply block Hero. And yeah, he's, he is going to get pretty punished right now. Losing another overlord there. Once again, supply blocked. If you're not uh, predicting which overlords are going to go down or how many overlords are going to go down and kind of preemptively making that the supply block can last for a really long time. Looks like Hero did preempt that and he has opened up that supply now. He can start to get more Hydra out on the field, but that sort of situation can snowball really, really quickly and get out of control. But it looks like Hero... Oh, he's actually popped full drone and there's a lot of... Uh, Zealot's coming across the map right now. This could be a real issue. Maybe, you know, Bisu can uh, snowball this out of control. This is quite a few Zealots coming up with that plus one. We need Hydra right now. We don't have SimCity in the natural. We've only got SimCity at the third. And we don't have any Sunkins here. This is going to get nasty, man. I think we're, we might see Hero just get completely knocked out here. This is going to get too crazy. Wow. He's blocking on the ramp at least. But the Lynx are not going to do anything. Lynx just getting eaten up by these zealots and he's gonna start to lose more overlords yeah he's just gonna get on top of these overlords kill all the overlords and the, the the zealots are gonna deal with everything else and the drone drill is good enough but here is just gonna tap out gg is cool i really feel like this is the wrong response from hero full hatch hydro would have been a much better choice not only can he apply pressure to bisu and force cannons but also just survive against the zealot say i don't know why he didn't go for that yeah it seemed like a bit of a uh, misread there from Hero. He thought he had time to make another round of drones there, but just didn't account for the the timing here from Bisu. That move out timing with that good number of zealots and plus one and speed finishing up rips him apart. GG is called. Finally, Hero gets taken out. Not a surprise that Bisu is the one to do it here. I think that's why he's uh like that's what he's made for really is taking mm -hmm. out these strong zerg players but um kind of a surprise that hero went down like that in this game we're gonna jump into our next one here guys game number four is coming right up well one player being taken out from each race thus far here we're gonna have bisu versus sharp now and sharp i really rate against bisu actually bisu's uh pvt not quite as strong as some of these other players someone like best someone like snow and sharp is reaching that pinnacle of uh, of tvp he is so so strong in this matchup right now mm, i mean bisu back in the day had some some of the best pvt micro in terms of like being able to like mine sweep with dragoons and these kind of things but in this day and age the kind of tool set that he had isn't as uncommon so he doesn't really have a leg up over the other protosses and pvt as he once did and these modern terrans are so good at dealing with the kind of proto shenanigans that bisu used to abuse so much in uh, times past so doesn't have the kind of mantle to stand on in this matchup as he once did and 
Unfortunately for him, that is the matchup that's holding him back right now. If it wasn't for his PBT, he'd probably be one of the best players out there. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Just not quite at that same level as he's reached with uh, PVZ. He's going to Nexus first here. And Sharp going for more of a conservative build. Will he be able to bust the Nexus? How greedy is Bisu going to get here? Will we see a double gateway follow-up? Dealing a lot of damage to this early SCV, really slowing down the scouting here from Sharp. Sharp really does need to know about this Nexus first as soon as possible, and looks like he's going to send out a second SCV maybe to, to continue the scouting, while the, the first SCV going to head back home. When he sees this Nexus, what is going to be his response here? I'm really curious to see 5 HP left on this. Just one more hit from this probe and Bisu will get that first kill. First blood. No, not able wow. to get it. Beautiful control here by Sharp. As he sends his next SCV here into the natural, he will see that Nexus first. What is going to be his response? I'm so curious. Yeah, I'm curious too. I really liked how both players were doing manual move commands on uh, the workers there. It allows you to move through the hex grid so much more precisely and it, it gives you a higher turn rate on the, the units as well so that they can like more smoothly adjust their course. They move at like perfect horizontal and diagonal angles to navigate and kind of cut the distance between the two units and both players there doing an absolute superb job of uh, trying to abuse the hex grid but looks like uh, Sharp got the better of him and Sharp is known for his early game and mid to late game unit control and he's going to demonstrate that with his vultures this game more than likely and Bisu needs to be careful I feel like someone like Sharp can actually really stretch his ability uh, in this matchup and Sharp is the best person to send out in dealing with him I think yeah Bisu here not leaving a zealot on the ramp is really going to pay for that First Zealot going to walk in here towards the natural, but three Marines already prepared. He's not actually being micro or microing them right now. He's more focused on the Vulture. Going to try and run behind the Mineral Patches right now, but he needs to keep these Marines active, keep them fighting with the Zealot, lest he lose this SCV building the Command Center. It looks like he may end up losing that. Two kills on the Vulture. Pretty darn good getting those two kills. A couple of probes pick, picking off, but slowing down this CC is actually maybe more impactful here. Yeah, and he's done a great job of slowing down this uh, CC. I mean, the the, 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 the the SCV bounces could have been a little bit luckier for Sharp to prevent that from occurring. But he's getting into the natural expansion with the Vulture yet again. There's nothing blocking the ramp, so he's done so much damage to Beast's economy while also denying uh, mining. And trading like two or three probes for the Vulture it is good if you haven't got mines on the way. And I think his mines are only just now about to start to finish up. So it's great that he's getting so much value out of these Vultures. And now on the exit, is going to start laying down mines outside the natural of Beast while he's also going to be dealing with this uh, small threat at the front. He kills that Zealot and just lays down mines in the face of that Dragoon. And another Dragoon dies to the mine that he laid down in a trap. So everything's going so well for Sharp. Yeah, getting so many kills on the probes here. Bisu being a little bit too aggressive, not keeping a single Dragoon at, back at home. Oh my god, is he going to walk into this mine? It really looked like he was about to. That vulture did end up going down, I guess, to the mine that it laid and the mine that actually killed the dragoon. So, you know, getting some good value out of that first vulture. Really, really good value there and not taking too much damage on the counterattack. He's even blocking in this dragoon over here on the right hand side. I don't think that Bisu will be able to get this home. A couple of vultures going to come up here and finish that off. So far, just perfect play here from Sharp. Really handling this early game. No, outstandingly. Yeah, not losing this vulture here as well is just like the icing on the cake. Like he's been so cost efficient with what few units he's got. And when you when you make vultures as Terran, it's always indicative of being aggressive. You make tanks defensively and vultures aggressively. And Sharp is so good with his vulture control that he's able to just stay making vultures for a long time before even producing his first couple of tanks like we see now. And that just gives you so much higher potential value as Terran and also gives you control over the game state. So it frustrates someone like Bisu who maybe could have considered doing some kind of shenanigans in the early game to kind of get a foothold and kind of control the game state. Instead, Sharp's just going to snatch that away from from him and just put himself into a dominating position here. even though the supplies aren't favoring sharp right now it doesn't matter he's got complete control over the game state i think we might see a push here from sharp honestly we've lost too many dragoons and we just took another mine hit uh, on these two dragoons here at the front they're they've been pretty badly damaged and we only have two gateways right now with the second factory finishing up and a good number of tanks here 
the dragon count is low i don't know i think sharp might might consider a push right now he is adding on you know he has the uh the armory here that's spinning that's kind of working against my theory right now citadel of a dune coming down but no more gateways here just yet and this is not going to be able to outproduce sharp right here sharp actually going to get an engineering bay for himself it's looking kind of more of a defensive play getting out these uh these goliaths and that but um i think there was an option here there was an a moment where maybe sharp could have come across the map with three tank and and done something but it looks like instead he's more focused on defense he's just going to focus on it, making sure he doesn't take damage here as a bisu comes in towards the natural he should have siege mode here on the high ground to defend yeah, I'm I was curious for a second there if Bisu was considering a rush to Arbiters. He was staying on two gate obs for so long. He's finally thrown down a third gateway. There's a te yeah, it's going to be Arbiters. I knew it. Okay, so he's going to go for Arbiters. I think that's a great play in this situation. Um, I'm happy to see it. Um, he is going to deny this Vulture, getting the snipe on that probe and prevent any kind of scout off. We see some scans going down, though. Sees the forge, sees the observatory, sees the three gateways and everything else, but doesn't see this Templar tech, doesn't see this um, this Stargate on the way. So he has no idea that it's going to be Arbiters just yet. He will still make the kind of, like, meta for Goliath uh, that you see so many Terran. Oh, he up. sees it now. Follow-up scan is going to see that as well. So now, B uh, Bisu's in a little bit of trouble because Sharp has such a good read on the game state. He knows all the timings that Bisu can throw at him now, so he's going to be able to adjust his play and min max is terran build order to deal with this quite cost efficiently i think yeah there's not a whole lot of meat on the army here for bisu's army uh, for for bisu's force he just doesn't have a lot of zealot he doesn't have a lot of gateways those are going to start to be added on right now but sharp's got a pretty decent army here and the push uh distance towards that third base is really not that far are we going to see sharp just take a third base here though he can p push up, take this third, and then behind the third base, he can start to push farther north and hit the third of Bisu. I think that might be the plan here. He's starting to set up turrets, being very careful here, not overextending as he adds on more factories and gets himself ready for this third base. Mm. Uh, one thing I do like um, about the current Metron PVT is this this habit for Terrans to go up to four Goliaths early. It's such a strong number. It allows you to kind of one-shot observers and also two-shot um, shuttles, which gives you such good um, defense against the shenanigans pros can throw at you in the early game and also allows you to constantly scan for observers, shut those down, deny some vision, and uh, kind of control what the Protoss can and can't see and also shut down any kind of uh, like bust plays that could prevent you taking your third base and yeah it looks like uh, sharp's gonna be um, snaking around a little bit with a couple of vultures see what's what see the timings of things he sees that um bisu's going for this fourth base he doesn't actually confirm that the nexus is there so it could be like a fake where he just took the pylon wall and didn't actually build the nexus but um it's usually unlikely that protoses do that but it's somewhat common for protoses to kind of fake an expansion then go for a bust but i don't think he's not getting the vibe from this game he knows that's a genuine fourth base because of the other tech timings so he's pretty confident right now about the game state and he's kind of delayed his third just a little bit um considered compared to bisu so it looks like um this choice to go all the way up to like five or six factories early on will give him such a strong army in being able to secure this third and will also give him a very big opportunity to just push and kill bisu as soon as he wants to yeah that's a lot of factories coming online here gonna go up to seven right now and we've, we we only have six gateways here of course the addition of the arbiter tech is supposed to make that uh you know that deficit up a little bit but you should at least have the same number of gateways as the the terran has factories really um so we'll see if bisu i, I guess bisu gonna try and take more bases here i don't know if he's got like a little bit of a misread or something but he really wants to get up here and take top left uh whereas i think that sharp is going to come out with a really strong uh, three base timing here push directly northward and take out that third base maybe go straight up towards the natural as well this is going to be hard for bisu to hold on if he's trying to take more bases right now 
yeah, the game plan for Sharp right now is a big one-two punch. Where he wants to not only take out this natural third of Bisu, but then like make his way downtown to the rally point and contain that as well. Then if he wants to, he can either win the game with a push or just keep Bisu contained and knock out this 12 o'clock base as well and keep Bisu contained on two bases. Uh, right now, the Bisu is remaining very fluid of his army and staying out on the map, keeping the pressure on. Has an Arvato of status available at 12 minutes and has a big standing army to try and fight Sharp. I think uh, Bisu has done well to kind of naturally align himself to deal with what Sharp is doing, but Sharp still has enough tools in his arsenal to just ward off this attack. He has 150 supply. Bisu's going to go for it. He thinks he's got enough to do so. He's going to try and maybe stasis the big clump of vultures, actually, instead of the tanks, which is an interesting choice. Even though he's not got that many vultures, not many zealots for the he cleaned up by the vultures, he still went for that, and it's an interesting choice by him, but it's not that many tanks, so if he can get on top of these and just kill off all of the tanks, it's going to be great for him to reset the tank count, and because he didn't stasis the tanks, there's more tanks to kill, so he can get a bigger tempo swing here and then back out with what Dragoons he's got remaining. Yeah, I think that was a great choice here by Bisu, actually. Uh, I think that's exactly, you know, the, the mindset that he's in is just, I need to kill as many tanks as I can. Let's remove the part of the army that we don't care about killing, which is those vultures, and just go after the tanks. And it works out really, really well for him. I was a bit worried there that Bisu was going to lose a huge chunk of his army with this first attack and then Sharp was going to counter attack him really strongly but that's not really what happened the tank count has been severely reduced and you know Sharp sitting here with 126 apply there's no way he can push right now this base in the top left is actually looking really really good now Bisu already having that probe up there you know having that cleared getting some cannons on the high ground he's looking to be in a great position now yeah, and he has 10 gateways to about 7 factories, which is, which is around about the production you need to be at to kind of be on par with the Terran. It's, it's roughly like 1.5 gateways to a factory in terms of like value of production. So it's always good to stay slightly ahead of the Terran in terms of how many gateways you got. You at the least need 1 to 1 ratio to kind of not die. But yeah, if you can get a little bit more gateways than factories, it's usually a good position to be in. Ideally, you want to have a 2 to 1 ratio, like 20 gateways versus 10 factories for the super late game to really start to overwhelm the Terran, which is why you see Protoss just try and set up these corner bases so they not only have the access to two rally points, but can also just get up to an insane amount of gateways. We're already maxed out here as Bisu. I haven't seen any more uh, Arbiters here, but will we be going for a Recall soon? I don't think that Recall has been... I, I feel like Recall has really fallen off recently in terms of its power, in terms of its usefulness against Terran players because they are so good at dealing with, you know, main base Recalls. Oh, he's going to catch this Probe Transfer going up towards the po top left. This is classic Sharp. He's going to get so many probe kills here. Really nice pickoffs there from him. But another big attack coming in. Oh, great EMP there, getting rid of that. I want to mention last time we had a fight, the uh, sh shuttle got picked off really quick, but this time the shuttle actually unloading a lot on top of these tanks. Tanks going down on mass, and Beast is starting to push in towards the natural. There's quite a bit of forces here uh, to the north over at the third base, but down here to the south there's almost nothing just two tanks on high ground and beast is going to keep pushing forward okay he doesn't have observers to push through those mines so he is going to have to back off but once again resetting a lot of this tank count trading out pretty inefficiently but i think it's okay with the number of bases that he has online the number of uh you know production facilities that he's got he's going to be able to remax way faster and lowering that tank count is is just great for bisu here Mm -hmm. Sharp's done a good job of not bleeding off too many of his vultures this game from raiding, so it does leave up a small window for a counter-attack here if Bisu makes a bit of a blunder. So he has to be a little bit careful because there is a chance where Bisu gets a little bit too uh, overzealous and comes in here, does a bad trade, and suddenly Sharp's got a, you know, like a push timing and just like pulls the trigger on a big counter-offensive. So he needs to be careful. If we can keep the tank count low, that will kind of make Sharp be very hesitant to push. Sharp can't see the supply. So even though right now we can see that Sharp's in a pretty good supply state, Sharp has no confirmation of that. Right now, Bisu could be max and able to remax again so sharp wants to be a little bit careful just make a fourth cc float that to six and then start to come out onto the map in a bit more of a tentative way and not really take any gambles here yeah it doesn't seem like a real push is going to be possible taking the fourth base is going to be difficult as it stands uh, i'm not too clear on where you can actually build turrets out here on the map but i think the middle of the map is pretty safe for building turrets you can you know build a bunch of turrets here uh, you know, cut off a bit of space in the middle of the map. 
it will be hard with the much wider choke area the you can get a bunch better spread on your zealot and dragoon in order to come in and break that but um we're, we're gonna see sharp move out here pretty soon he really needs to take a fourth base so he's gonna start to shove forward here now bisu is ready for this attack coming out here but does he have storm in this shuttle now or is it just more uh, zealots he did add on a second arbiter or a second stargate to build more arbiter here he comes for a recall recall on top of this third base what no he's going for the main i don't like this i think the third base would have been a much better call oh my god that's so many units that's a crazy recall. So many zealots and goons, and Sharp's in desperation mode, making sure he can get as many units into main base as possible. If there was another another arbiter with that, he could have stasis the ramp and made this a nightmare scenario. He wasn't able to do so. Sharp so far, though, doing a good job of cleaning this up. Hasn't really lost a lot in the main base, trying to get as much of a cost efficient trade as possible to get these units out of his base and then get back onto the map. Um, BC trying to be a little bit annoying, maybe snipe up a few of these uh, supply depots, but he's not going to be able to get much for his efforts. So all this has done is kind of slow down Sharp a little bit. This is working out in his favor. He has a big stand army right now after that trade so unless bisu can max quickly sharp's got a, an opportunity now to actually go on the, the offensive but i'm not sure if he's gonna be able to identify that trigger or not because bisu's gonna keep hitting him over and over again with more and more more recalls here yeah this is a better recall here into this third base still there's quite a few units around here uh the the army coming down to the bottom six o'clock though is really really good that's a great move from bisu to kind of slow things down uh, to stop that fourth base from quickly coming online. He's doing a lot of distractions right now, but look at the supply. Bisu are falling quite a bit farther behind, and another recall going to come in here? Is, is this really what we're doing? Just constant recalls down into this third base? Is this actually going to work for him? There's a lot of units over here. He's going to be able to block this even. Uh, you know, having the EMP there is big. He might send that uh, uh, Science Vessel forward. There's, like, quite a few... Arbiters over in that area just kind of chilling waiting for energy if he manages to spot that find that and EMP that it could be huge Look at this right there. There's an arbiter just waiting for that energy and he if he could get an EMP on that That would be massive now gonna clear out six o'clock and take this base Sharps looking to be in a pretty good spot now these recalls have kind of done more harm than good yeah, he's put that um, science vessel on patrol just above his uh, expansion to kind of ward away that area to kind of threaten Bisu with an EMP should he uh, come back to do another recall. Uh, looks like a Bisu instead going to be fluid with his army in the middle of the map. Try and slow down this push that um, Sharp's going to go for now. He's going to both attack and defend at the same time now. He's going to secure this fourth base location while just shoving Bisu back onto the map as far as he can. If he can get all the way up to the rally point, that's great, but he doesn't want to go for that yet. He wants to stay on his side of the map to keep his recall defense alive. Beautiful EMP on this Rabita, though. Going to be shutting down further efforts from Bisu and denying this fourth base, which he had done uh, so beautifully up until this point. So, has slowed down the growth of sharp which you need to do as protoss you either kill the economy of the terran player or you slow down his growth and bisu's done a good job of doing a little bit of both of those things so has kept the threat of sharp under control until this point but now sharp's starting to get a foothold in the game and it's starting to push bisu all the way back to his side of the map and now things are going to start to turn this is where the mechanics of the terran are really put to the test pushing out against a bunch of templar and a huge gateway army here. He's not taking the big storms that a lesser player would. He's really pushing this out beautifully and displaying his skill here in this game. Wow, that's so many Arbiters. Oh my God, there's so many stasis available here. If he gets some really good stasis on the army, even this small little gateway force here could actually rip through a lot of tanks uh, and, uh, you know, supply here for the Terran, but... He's actually thrown down a bunch of mines here on the right-hand side, left a few tanks behind, and now pushing up towards the top left. I love this move. Beautifully done by Sharp. This is all going to slow amazing. him down a little bit. These four tanks are kind of sacrificial here, but uh, he's going to be able to kill off a base and maybe even the top base in the top left as well. Yeah, Sharp's understanding how fluid he needs to be in this situation, but he needs to be careful not to call his pants down. Bisu's in hot pursuit right now, trying to get between this wedge of Terran force that's moving out across the map, and now beats Sharp scrambling to pull all his, all his army back onto his side of the map to prevent anything from being sniped, and he's done a great job of that, but he's starting to lose a little bit of this uh, supply that he had before. Now Bisu back in a normal position of being ahead by about 30 or so. Doesn't have that window of advantage that he had just a moment ago, does Sharp. 
out, but still in a great position now, has Bisu warded on his side of that map. The only downside to this is that the recall defense now becomes so much harder, and Bisu's making his way to this left side of the map to come for another recall at the six o'clock position. But we have this science vessel just waiting, so as long as Bisu can dodge this EMP, he could maybe uh, win the game with this maneuver. I think this is a bait. This is a bait. I don't think that has any energy. The second arbiter is going to come in here. This is the one with actual energy. That was, that was a, uh, that was a fake right there. And this is going to come. This is going to work. I think. Oh, he, no, he missed. No, he missed with the EMP. Oh my god, that's so painful. Sharp not able to get the EMP there, and he may lose the command center. Indeed, he will lose this command center. And Bisu. Taking a big advantage now in this game. A beautiful recall there. That is really what recalls are meant to do, is to shut down additional bases of the Terran player. None of these big recalls into the main really did what they were intended, but this one, absolutely successful here. And shutting off the the pipe, the, the, the resource for Sharp here. He's getting close to a max, but I think he can only remax one more time. He has to get this next base online. He's going to try and take a base over here in the bottom left instead. He's going to try and cut this map in half now. Just forget about the 6 o'clock and, you know, take a big position down here in the bottom left. Will he be able to hold on against all of these Arbiters, all these recalls, all these stasis in this huge gateway army that's moving towards the bottom left that remains to be seen? He's taking a big hit to his production capabilities right now. And Bisu's going to try and take full advantage of that. And all these tanks are clumped up as well. Needs to be careful not to just get a big clump of units. Stasis does go after the Goliaths, actually. So now unable to snipe these um, Arbiters. There is a few High Templars in this uh, infantry force as well to throw down some storms and add some splash damage to the mix, increasing the, the potency of this force. Another Arbiter making my down the bottom left. Going to be getting emp this time, though, says um, Sharp. Not going to be allowing you to just get away with these recalls unchecked the entire time time bc remaining active on the map trying to snake around um, and deal with any threats that um, sharp's trying to um, annoy him with right now trying to slow down these expansions on the left hand side and trying to frustrate the growth of the protoss as much as possible because right now bc's out of control but that threat can get under control if he's able to uh, simultaneously slow down bc while also securing this bottom left quadrant and a map split like this does favor the terran the longer the game goes on so now it's kind of putting the question back into bc's uh, side of the, the fence and asking him to to try and make some moves to, to win this game instead of being the one to have to go out onto the map himself and push. He doesn't really have to attack anymore. He just needs to make sure he doesn't die. Yeah, making sure that he doesn't die. Very important that Sharp just hold on to this bottom left. He's going to clear 6 o'clock. The space not totally necessary right now. We do need to secure the middle of the map uh, so that we, can't, we don't get cut off uh, fr from the left, from the right here. We have to have some sort of uh, you know, f circulation between the two bases here. We have to be fluid with our army, really matching where the Protoss is going with this maxed out force. But, uh, I mean, we have plenty of resources in the bottom left. We really don't need the 6 o'clock right now. Just killing off those units, I guess, going to be worth it here. He's even built a Wraith, actually, to deal with these uh, random Arbiters sitting around the map, uh, just kind of gathering that energy. Uh, the one that was down there at the bottom center... Uh, would be at that race target, but now Sharp has that maxed out supply. Oh, we're even going for hallucination. I love it. We haven't seen a hallucinated Arbiter for so long, Shun, but here it is. This is an amazing game. Oh, I'm so speechless right now. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm like a kid in candy store. And he's even missing the EMP, so he's not even going to be killing the hallucinations. And oh, and this is going to be so annoying for Sharp to deal with. He's not even going to realize it until it's too late. And now the recalls are going to be initiating in the bottom right, getting on top of the Terran production. His army is way out of position in the center of the map, unable to come in and deal with this. And with some high Templars in the mix, he can also storm the units from the high ground, making this retaking of the, the high ground so painful for Sharp. I was saying, this is insane, this game. Yeah, this is getting wild. We did try to stasis on the ramp. It was not totally effective, but it's going to slow things down a little bit as they try to get into the main base here. He's going to be killing some of these uh, factories, potentially. He did kill off one of the machine shops. He's getting a bunch of supply depots, but really the follow-up play is what's going to be uh, painful here for Sharp. While all this is going on, can... Bisu get a, an Arbiter down to the bottom left. That's what he really needs to do. He needs to get a recall in there to shut down the, that base down there. 
to stop uh, Sharp from, you know, sustaining in that bottom left. And oh my god, look at all these hallucinations! <laughs> Oh my god! What are we seeing in this game, Sam? I'm this absolutely blown away. I'm, we're being spoiled right now in KCM. I can't believe how... Oh, look at that. It's so beautiful to see EMPs kill units. Um, <laughs> I, you never see this. You almost never see hallucinated... Um, much less in a pro game. You know what I mean? Like You don't even mm. see this on the ladder usually, let alone in a pro game. I'm so impressed right now by Bisu finding an opportunity to actually make use of this spell for a change. Realizing that that was a, an hallucination a hallucination. Oh, he sees the one Arbiter moving off to the side, but we are going to have this Arbiter wow. get in here with the recall. Oh, man, this is so painful for Sharp right now. He's going to lose control of the bottom left. He has to lift. He has to run. SCVs are going to get stormed to death. A bunch of tanks are here to defend, but it's going to be such a pain getting up this ramp. Bisu really getting that follow-up we were talking about here, getting so much damage and really slowing down the Terran player once again. This is Bisu's game to lose right now. Sharp desperately trying to hold on here, just all over the map. And it's Bisu going to be adding on more and more hallucinations, sending them all over the map. I love what he's doing with sending like just two hallucinations to one side and then having just a right. arbiter, one arbiter with a bunch of hallucinations going the other direction. It's so smart, actually. It's so hard to deal with for Terran here. You might get an EMP on this clump. BC's be looking at boys. One way you can detect these are hallucinations. You can check their HP as they're taking damage. They will take twice as much damage as usual. Um, but um, Sharp doing a great job of hunting down the real uh, uh, Arbiter in that occasion. But yeah, if you keep track of the vessel, the, the Arbiter HP as they're being shot by a turret or something, and you see it takes double damage, that's one way you can figure out if it's a, a hallucination or not. Wow. Again, more Arbiters heading down here towards... The bottom right. He's going to throw down one EMP. He has another one here. Oh, missing that one. Wow. But we've got an Arbiter here moving towards the 6 o'clock. Too many Goliaths here going to pick that off. Too many turrets here as well. Looks like that got EMP'd as well. Really, really good control here from Sharp. Shutting all of this down. But, I mean, we've got so many more in the in the chamber here for Beast. He's just going to keep firing these off, uh, you know, randomly at different sides of the map and trying to see what sticks. And if any of these recalls really go off and deal a bunch of damage, he's going to be in a great position. He's going to be able to shut down more bases and really slow down Sharp even more. Another great EMP going off here, dealing some, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of some of this energy. Oh my god, look at how many, uh, <laughs> look at how many science vessels are stuck in this stasis right now. Can he just push wow. through to the win? This is ridiculous what we're seeing right now. He heard us talking about his PVT abilities and he was like, hold my beer. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> and I, do you know what? I'm all for it. I love to be proved wrong. And look at it. This is a beautiful game we're seeing right now. This is absolutely exceptional levels of Starcraft and so hard to actually execute. Like there's so many times during this game where all this hallucination shenanigans could have gone direly wrong for Bisu and it could have blown up in his face. And he's managed to maintain complete control over the ebb and flow of the game. And Sharp was holding his own this entire time doing a great job of defending and he's just getting pulled apart left, right and center. It's an amazing game, Sam. This is a great game here. And Bisu... Looks like he's going to lose that shuttle. He's going to lose these Templar. He may end up losing all of the Arbiters down here as well. We did have some Wraiths out earlier. I don't know what happened to those. There's the Wraith coming in, but a, a big recall going to come down here to the bottom left. This is beautiful. This is like, this is the killing move right here. The killing joke. Bottom left-hand corner going to get removed from the map. Sharp. No mining left right now. He's going to retake, I think, 6 o'clock, but... Really, shutting down all of these vessels was such a good play. Having all of them stasis at the same time means he can just constantly recall here without fear of being EMP'd. There's nothing that Sharp could do about that. He is going to retake this base down here, and he's still fighting back, but dropping down to 100 supply. Things are getting dire right now for Sharp. Wow, Bisu's an absolute maestro. He's just, at the moment, sprinkling on garnish onto the dish that he's prepared for Sharp, and Sharp's blade is... Uh... Not gonna be even required to eat this dish. Bisu's gonna be like serving him a dish that's specially prepared just for him. And what a dish it is as well, saying. I'm absolutely blown away by Bisu's play in this game. Um, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, adding some more spice here. Gonna be uh, sending out more and more Arbiters. Will we ever see a transition into Carrier, do you think? We can get the Finger of God, the Carrier-Arbiter combo. 
that kills everything that it touches. I don't think so. It seems like Bisu just wants to continue with this play. If Sharp manages to stabilize, which I don't think he will, with 80 supply, there's almost no chance of him doing that. He has to land every single uh, EMP perfectly, not allow any more recalls from this point. He's like one recall away from death. Uh, as this army makes its way down here. I don't know if he'll even be able to hold on against it, but here comes that Arbiter play. Yeah, he's just going to throw down Stasis from here on, uh, getting rid of a few tanks here, and GG is called. GG. That is it. Bisu takes that game. Outstanding game, though, it was versus Sharp here. He gets the clapper from KCM. Well, very well deserved. Whew, these have been some fantastic games, guys. This is this is the type of week of KCM that can reinvigorate your passion for this game. This is the type of week of KCM that'll make you think about reinstalling Brood War just to give it another go because you have witnessed the artistry that is possible in this game. Of course, your games will never, ever look like what we saw in that last one the beauty of two pro players at the very highest level clashing is something to behold but it can bring you some of that passion it can bring you some of that joy and uh, inspiration to play once again on the ladder. I'm feeling like a bit of a ladder session right now, aren't you, Shun? <laughs> I mean, I don't usually ladder that much, but yeah, I'm even even I'm feeling the ladder bug and wow, I'm, I'm speech speechless. My brain is just lit up right now. All my neurons are firing. I can feel the nerd tingles, like the circuitry is just coming alive. And wow, I'm so impressed by these, abil these players' ability to not only demonstrate their, their artistry, but also their like, unparalleled understanding of one of the most complicated and d deep games we've ever been blessed with and i feel eternally grateful not only to cast these games but just to like be a part of this crazy community that we, we've been able been indoctrinated in willing willfully over these years saying I'm, I'm so blessed right now yeah me as well so happy to be here casting these games with you shun it's an absolute pleasure and bisu watching him Watching him come out and bring, you know, such an older style of gameplay. We haven't seen uh, Arbiter, not to mention, you know, Arbiter with the mass hallucination for such a long time. But his ability to bust that out in that last game and, you know, make it work even against one of the strongest Terran players we have right now. Oh, beautiful play by Queen here, but no, making a mistake with the micro there. You could see that uh, the moving shot was happening for Bisu. He had that moving shot going. And, you know, Queen, like, did this kind of sweet maneuver where he blocked the probe for a second and then bounced away from it to get that little bit of extra space, but then got stuck on the wall. So unfortunate for him there, losing his first drone, but at least he will get his third hatch down now. He's got a few links on the map. He's got his gas going. Losing that early drone, though, to the first probe is super annoying, though. Yeah, and Beast is just so... F uh, incredibly on top of things like i'm curious to see if if he's gonna like really like turn around and start to really improve his pvt and figure out some of the issues that have been holding him and him back all this time and he's gonna kind of make a big splash out onto the scene i would love to see that um right now though he's be really careful if he snipes this probe he will get in to at least scout and harass the main base is going to be getting in there with three links it's a little bit annoying for beast you'd have to deal with they are low hp on these links they probably won't get a lot of damage done but it's still a, a big annoyance if they delay any mining or kill any probes here it's a really frust big frustrating thing to have to deal with and the fact that they're getting a full scout inside the main base allows queen to optimize his lava production and produce exactly what he needs to put himself in the most cost efficient state in the game possible so beast instead is now going to put a lot of counter to pressure come across the map and try and force as many links as possible as he can out of queen these links have run by the zealots here and if queen doesn't have like mass ling being produced right now he's gonna take a lot of damage these two zealots are making their way up towards the third a third zealot gonna come up here as well 
I think a lot of links just did pop out. So these links over here on the left hand side, they might be able to run in and kill the cannon. If the links from the main come in as well, he could get this cannon. He could get the pylon as well. This is a really big move. He might just be taking out Bisu here. I think he has. I think uh, Bisu might not be able to stabilize now because the Zealots are far too far away from the wall to make it back in time without being dealt with with these uh, links that are coming in. This Zealot's now being beautifully trapped up against their Nexus. A pro drill does try and save it. Not able to do so. Three of the probes and four of the probes going down in quick succession. Now Queen is all over Bisu. Bisu's going to have to evacuate this natural expansion. Probably make cannons in his main base. There's no way he can retake this natural expansion. He has got some Zealots and probes to try and fight this number of links, but he's just going to make his way into the main base of those. So he doesn't even have to fight this Protoss force. He can just run around the main base over and over again and cause a lot of problems for Bisu, Bisu to have to deal with. He's trying to do some counter pressure on this third base location, but Queen is on top of his multitask and able to deal with that as well. There's a Corsair on the way, but there's not going to be enough Zealots to help deal with this Speedling force that's just running rampant in his main base. GG finally called Bisu just dealt with in style. Wow, that's just how quickly things can fall apart there. Once you let some Lings into your main base as the Protoss, you cannot be leaving your natural with a cannon unfinished. He ends up losing to the counterattack, to the Lings running into the natural, killing off that cannon, killing off the pylon is kind of the final blow there. And Bisu, after play, putting up some absolutely insane great games, gets taken out by a Ling play. That, that is the ebb and flow of Brood War. If we had epic games every single time, this is, we would be playing a completely different game. This is what it is, guys. And we're going to be jumping into our next game with Bisu getting knocked out by here by Queen. It's going to be Queen versus Light that's coming up next. Well, Bisu getting taken down in very quick fashion there. Queen, unfortunately, did not make it into this season of ASL. He got knocked out, but still putting on a good show for us here in the KCM. I'm sure he's actually... Very embarrassed about that. If you guys haven't seen the video uh, about that from Jinjin's channel, definitely go check that out. Uh, he's basically getting clowned on by all of the other uh, ASL players. He's getting clowned on by even players who didn't make it into the ASL, like people like Tom, uh, other you know Zerg players, just laughing at him for getting taken out by basically what amounts to a no-name player. Um, basic, just a no-name ladder player that you know nobody even knows who he is. Got ended up taking out Queen, and uh, you know ending his run in the ASL, which is actually astonishing to hear. And maybe that that will be the the fire under Queen's butt this season. You know he'll go back to the drawing board, practice up really really hard, and come back with a new uh, kind of a renewed fury in ASL 18. We'll have to see though. He definitely needs to reinvent himself a little bit and it could be just the ticket that he does need to do to do exactly that. But in this game, he's elected to go for a very early pull into expansion. So both uh, giving him some opportunity to pressure uh, a greedy CC first here and also be safe against any kind of eight racks pressure. This is Troy, after all. It's slightly Terran favored. Uh, the statistics on it are a bit in, uh, hard to glean because we don't have a great uh, sample size to, to pull from. But as far as we know, this is a uh, this is a slightly Terran favored map and quite a heavily Protoss favored map against Zerg. So it's a little bit okay for Queen that he's against a Terran instead of a, a Protoss here, but still a slight advantage on this map for the Terran player uh, from what we can glean from the statistics. Uh, this is a really wild map, and we're going to have a bit of a wild build here from Light. I think we're going to see two Port Wraith. I'm not 100% sure on that, but we're still seeing gas mined here by three uh, SCVs right now and that's kind of leading me to believe we're going to see two point two port wraith here pretty soon um going after the assimilators here queen gonna try and block in light and he should be able to get like an, an angle here where you can hit with a bunch of lings and kill this assimilator he's gonna lock his opponent in but i think this is kind of what light wants right he's gonna be able to take the the uh you know the two port wraith build take over the the sky and then probably just build a cc in his main and float down to that island base over on the right side of his main base uh, this used to be the build that light was known for being so good at he, he's always been very good at these sort of like really like low economy technical cheeses that terran can do back in the day he was one of the best players at doing this kind of a two port wraith cheesy way of playing terran 
Uh, he is cross map, so it does take a little bit longer for those wraiths to make their way into the main base, but that doesn't really matter too much because sometimes that can even work to your advantage because during the mid game phase, when it's um, muters or something trying to deal with those wraiths, then it's actually a lot harder for the Zerg to keep track of those uh, wraiths in a cross map scenario. So it can actually work in Terran's favor despite being a longer distance to get to the Zerg. I like that he's going for Hydralis Den here. He knows that he's not going to be able to get um, enough out in time to deal with that, but he doesn't have a sunken. I thought that he was definitely going to build the sunken colony at the front, but he's actually neglected to do that. At the moment that he saw the, the factory land, I thought that we would see that started, but instead he's going to rely on Hydralisk and the Ling defense here, which is pretty strong against the... Uh, the vultures here coming forward and with the lings backing them up I guess he will be able to push everything back so um, pretty good calculated play here from Queen you know not having to build any sunkins here and having the hydralis for the defense uh, from the vultures and the uh, uh, wraiths coming up here yeah, but he can't afford to do both. He can't afford to go not, uh, pull first um, and go Hydralis then and make a Sunken. It's just mm. too much of a hit to his economy here. So he's had to make a cut somewhere and he's tried to defend with the bare minimum and he's managed to walk the tightrope successfully. Now, though, his drones are going to be starting to be targeted down by these wraiths, currently going to be three shot by the, the volley of those two wraiths. It's when they start to get up to a higher count that the wraiths become a real threat because because of the, the HP regeneration, they're not that scary in low numbers. But as soon as they get up to a higher count, they become super scary for the Zerg to deal with. So right now, though, these Hydras are getting picked up one at a time. Beautiful use of these SEVs, adding a little bit of extra DPS. The SEVs have slightly more DPS than the other two workers, so can provide just enough tipping scale to turn fights in your favor. And he's doing a great job of that, is like using absolute minimal amount of units to the full effectiveness. Now going to be locking Queen out of this natural expansion while going to work on the Overlords as well. And as the third Wraith comes in, it's his time to kill the Overlords drop so significantly that now Queen's in a world of hurt. Yeah, this is uh, this is really down to Queen going for these Mutalists right now. He's going to get the Mutalists out uh, finally here as everything is just kind of falling apart. But, um, you know, if he had just been producing straight Hydralis, he would have held this off no problem. But trying to do both techs at the same time is very, very hard. He wanted to just get the Hydras out. Just barely enough of them to slow down the uh, Wraiths from dealing too much damage and stop the... the vultures from coming in here but with the addition of the scvs like you said and the marines with their dps he was able to bust right through and deal a lot of damage here now queen really on the back foot really in a bad position he does not have many drones he needs to redrone and he can't really afford things like luxuries like uh, overlord speed here so there's no way that he can actually attack his opponent and Light is so comfortable in the game state right now, he's just going to repair these wraiths and go up to a really high wraith count of, say, 8 to 11, and then he's going to go back in and just clobber Queen. And he'll start one-shotting Overlords, he'll start absolutely pulling apart this, this uh, player, and there's going to be nothing that Queen can really do in a response. He'll try and get as many Mutalisk and Scourge as he can to try and ward away the, 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 the wraiths, but the problem is they have higher range than the Muters, so with perfect micro, these wraiths will absolutely dominate the skies, and I think that's about to what we, we we will see that in a moment here there's no way i think that queen can even win with good micro no i don't think so either we'll have to watch and see um really light so good with the wraith control man it's it's ridiculous and he's mm. gonna get in here in a, a position where you know the uh, uh, mutas aren't ready to quickly react so he loses an overlord immediately already able to pick one of those off scourge looking for the raids here trying to get confirmation on where they are cloak should be done now so even if you know we see the uh, the the, the mutas of queen get on top of these raids he's just going to be able to back away and immediately cloak and then turn it and fight against these mutas uh, and you know pick off a whole bunch of them without taking too much damage it's just such a hard position for queen to deal with right now he should be getting overlord speed at this time but there's another base coming up here for light and he's switching now into marine medic this is uh, this is a brutal play this is such a great follow-up by light 
Yeah, this is this is the follow up um, to really solidify your advantage in this game and just prevent the Zerg from having a hope at coming back. You can switch into a standard bio game behind the stack of uh, wraiths that he's got. He's got eleven wraiths right now. He'll be one shotting overlords and uh, all, and almost one shotting these muters as well. It's going to be a nightmare scenario for Queen. He needs absolutely perfect micro just to have a chance at trading cost efficiently with him. And I don't think that'll even matter because with the bio uh, behind it, I feel like Queen's just far too far behind the economic curve to keep up with this there is a chance that he can get on top of light and surprise him get a few scourge connections or at least use the scourge to zone out the wraiths enough time for the the muters to remain chasing and get enough dps out to kill some of them it's possible but it's very hard he's gonna go for one final gambit here it looks like everything gonna be rallied across the map all of the overlords are gonna be coming with him and he's just gonna try and overwhelm i think in the main base Try to take over these uh, production facilities here. We don't have that many turrets right now. Uh, this is really a final attack here for Queen. He's going to actually... Wait, hold on. Double expansion behind this. That is not what I was expecting. Look at that. Two Great expansions. Response. Center right uh, and top right. Great He's kind of like forcing out a lot of turrets here and then just going into a double exp expansion. That's crazy. This is exemplary. Okay, so yeah, this is great. So you're forcing the Terran into dumping all his resources into defense, thinking he has to survive. You're limiting the the economic prowess of the Terran player by doing so, while also getting, while also playing wide. Because right now, the one thing he hasn't got is a wide uh, production, and he, he's basically ramping that up with the double expansion. He's kind of fixing the hole in his play, while also now going to be switching into a more passive uh, line of thinking, and that will now force the Terran player to be the one that's the aggressor again, and that will allow him to start to abuse this sort of high ground advantage defenders advantage and other factors he can now use to maybe kind of tip the scales enough in his favor to kind of not have to worry about this overwhelming threat of light i think this would have been great if he had started lurker if he had lurker done right now i think this would have been fantastic but with just pure muta here and a few sunkins on high ground i don't think he'll be able to hold on the uh, the, the Wraiths are going to get a lot of damage here. They're even going to start to deal damage to the Sunken Colony. And this is way too many Marines. He's going to have to fight the Marines with the with the uh, Mutas. The whole time, the Wraiths are going to be dealing damage to these Mutas. So now finally getting a couple of shots off on these Wraiths. Not too bad here for Queen. I guess he holds on just barely. Look at that. Holding on with just Sunken yeah. and Muta here. Well, he's got the plus one carapace on his air, which does give him a lot more sustainability in these sort of like skirmishes that we see with the race kind of trading with their Gemini missiles and trying to um, like outmuscle the muters. They're not quite getting dealt with as quickly as they would usually without that plus one carapace. And also the scourge will be harder to target down and kill before they make their connection. So there's something going for Queen here. And if he doesn't get these two bases shut down by light, he will explode economically in the next like three minutes or so. So light does have to do something here. He's getting on top of his overalls, trying to stop his overalls, but now able to do so and now uh, queen trying to get on top of the race but the overlords are just out of range has to re-engage and get back to the overlords so right now light in control and able to push these all the way back and will snipe the remainder of these overlords if queen's the careful shaves off the majority of those scourge as well and now light in a commanding position as the mu is forced to retreat luckily though didn't get caught in the the wings of those wraiths if the race rim um, range of those muters as that overlord died uh, queen would have lost pretty much half of half of all of those muters and then light would just win the game so thankfully Queen's not going to die right away, but it's looking pretty dicey. I feel like he's only going to be in this game for another couple of minutes. Yeah, he did manage to kill the uh, the two assimilators going into the top right-hand corner base. So he will be able to avoid losing that hatchery for now to the Marine attack. But uh, I don't know if he can hold on much longer. We will have an irradiate here pretty soon. There's the irradiate energy. Is he going to be able to throw it down? Looks like he's just going to go for this space right here. Light going to be able to pick off another Overlord here as well. As the hatchery falls, Queen probably going to be able to get some, you know, mining over there in the top right. But he's very cut off here from defending that area. Oh my god, he's going to go after the simulator. Can he get both of them? No, he's not going to be able to get both no of them way. before he gets out. That would have been hilarious, though, if he would have been able to <laughs> trap all the Marines and medics in there. Well, a B rank Terran player on the ladder, maybe not paying attention, might have had his army in the base long enough before he could, you know, stop the mutas from containing him. But someone like Light, as soon as the hatchery goes down, is going to be fluid of his army once more and back out onto the map. So, not going to be effective in doing that. Has got this Nidus canal set up to connect to this top right base. So, he might not be out of the game just yet, but there's no way you can stop these raids from picking away at your building. So, he might speed up for a raid on those mutas. Queen tries to split, doesn't get a great split, gets an okay split, but has taken enough damage on these mutas to. Oh, actually, 
actually Light needs to be a little bit careful. He's just a little bit too many of these rays, so he can actually now stop these rays from killing this Nidus canal. So that does give a little bit of life to Queen. Now this Nidus won't die. It will will mean that he can get this third gas online and keep a fighting chance in this game. And Light's response there is to take this sort of ninja expansion in the bottom left to kind of secure his um, prowess and, and stay ahead of the curve once more. And with two dropships going all the way to the top right, I don't know if uh, Queen will react to this quick enough to prevent himself from dying here. Oh no, he sent the Scourge over towards the main base instead of sending them... Oh, he's going to drop right yeah. here on top of the Lurkers though. That's a funny place to drop. And uh, the funny place to have the Lurkers here as well, but... Gonna surround and kill those off. More lurkers are gonna pop out here from the Nidus, but not enough. Just two lurkers here trying to pop out, and there's so much bio inside this base. He's gonna bring forward the Mutas here to actually clear out some of the bio, but more can be picked up here in a moment and brought into the base to actually finish this off. With this base going down, I think it's a, a foregone conclusion that Light should be able to take this game now. Um, able to deal a little bit of damage to this... Uh, hatchery right now we're gonna have another creep colony coming down we should have another uh nidus going up in the natural right now back at home for queen he's gonna run around behind the uh, hatchery try to get a little bit more damage here we've got a few more mutas right now maybe just barely he can uh kill off those marines but even more coming up here to try and contest this position he's gonna run right up on top of these lurkers with a few quick targets he should be able to pick those off he does and it looks like this base is going to end up falling. Wait a second. Another lurker pops out. More sunken colonies here. He's got some scourge to maybe pick off those. Uh, or at least threaten the pickoffs on those dropships. And getting rid of the vessels is huge. Those two vessels going down might actually save this base as we get a Nidus online. Well, Queen's trying to hang on to his matriarchy. Wrap your head around that little bit of a con contradiction. But right now, I, it seems like Queen's just hitting a lose less button while Light's trying to whack a win more button and so far Light's winning but the problem is is that he's still unable to kill Queen so there is a still a fighting hope for Queen here and as Artosis would say like technically the Zerg is immortal with 60 70 supply and uh, uh, rate and uh, defilers and that but it doesn't really matter right now Light with good micro and just like good control of his army now will just come on top of this position even though the Dark Swarm's here he can start to maneuver around it snipe off this Nidus canal and start to be a real big issue for Light the Queen but actually there's like not able to be able to commit to killing that Nidus canal so instead still this base is going to be online for queen and he's going to shuffle around maybe to this this little corner pocket and keep the assault going but since that Nidus is still online actually can't finish the game yet no can't finish the game but light is growing wider and wider look at him taking two bases down the bottom left he's gonna have four gas online here shortly with which he can build a and kind of an insane amount of uh, science vessels or battle cruisers, whichever one he chooses and he just picked off the third gas this third gas going down is so frustrating for queen losing that once again not going to be favoring him here he's going to be really falling behind in terms of his gas units more every single irradiate here is going to be massive massive damage for queen because he just can't afford to produce gas units here yeah, it looks like Light's ahead in every metric right now. I don't really see a way of Queen coming back in this. He's going to try and get this third base, uh, sorry, three o'clock base online to secure a fourth gas, but Light just won't let him. And yeah, without without the gas, there's just no way Queen can continue to fight him. You can't really fight a Terran of pure mineral units. And with only 600 gas a minute from these two guys, it's not going to do it. And uh, I think the, the biggest issue is that even though he's going to get these other gases online, by the time he's secured this third and fourth gas, his main and natural gas are going to be start to be depleted. So they will never have the kind of like influx of gas that he needs to really contend with this explosion of the um, uh, bases from light so he'll never have the gas count that he needs to actually combat these vessels and actually make his way out to the other side of the map yeah this is when you know the terran player is about to win the game is when the uh vessels start to throw down irradiates on absolutely everything overlords scourge everything is a target here for these irradiates looks like we're might catch these dropships coming into the main no he's just barely gonna miss that and the drops are gonna get in here the links are not on top of it either we've got some fire bats mixed in here links are just not gonna be the ticket to stop this and this might be the killing blow here the drops in the main gonna pull queen apart here gonna kill a bunch of his tank and although he's managed to sort of stabilize over there in the top right he's sort of got that gas back online he's kind of hanging on right now 
It's just writing on the wall here for Light. He is eventually going to be able to take him down. Uh, you know, even if it takes another couple of minutes, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. There's so many vessels here to just continuously irradiate. I think once he sees the Battlecruiser's Queen will tap out. Yeah, this is like a I really win more button because there's no way he can have the lava or gas production to actually deal with those uh, battle cruisers anymore. You need six scourge per battle cruiser at this stage. I think he's got the plus one carapace. Yeah, he's got the plus one carapace. So he won't lose the scourge to one shots from these um, bat BC. So actually five will do the trick unless he target fires the scourge. Um, so that's one thing going for him, but he just doesn't have the gas to deal with it. And now with the D-Matrix back, he's pouring into the natural expansion, desperately trying to get some lurkers through the Nidus Canal to borrow and the amount of defense here. But at the very least, he's be losing a lot for his time. And with the bat even putting some splash damage onto those lurkers, his position just gets soft, more and more soft as time goes on. And more and more radiates going to be just dancing around the units and causing splash damage in a pandemonium um, display in the natural expansion as all the units kind of jostle around and like damage each other. And that's just going to cause more and more problems for Queen. Well, um, Light's only getting bigger and bigger. So, and this is, I think Artosa should take a note out of the, the book of um, Light here, because look how well he's playing. He's not only um, doing this uh, style where he's trying to lay siege to the Zerg, and uh, keep, even though they're, they're barely hanging on by a thread, but he's also expanded behind this. He's built BCs, he's taken so much gas advantage that it doesn't matter if the Zerg can cling on and trade cost efficiently. There's just no way that he can contend with this much gas being fielded by the Terran. Yeah, look at Light keeping his gas count so low here. This is just, I mean, this is something that even the best Terran players in the world can't do when they've got four mm. gases online, keep their gas count low. It's crazy to me to see him able to spend all of his money right now. He's almost maxed out, 172 supply. This is so impressive from Light and Queen. There's just no way he can hang on any further. He's going to try and take a base here, a uh, island base. That's like a kind of a good move, I guess. If you can get that online, that would be a really nice, uh, you know, extra place to start mining some more gas. But still, you're about to run out of uh, of gas in your main and natural. And finally, he does tap out. It wasn't when the battle cruisers were revealed, but just a few moments later here, we're going to have everything go down. And Queen finally throws in the towel. This is a fantastic week of KCM, though, guys. Look, we've got one player from each race left securing the final game here. We are 100% going to that last game uh, this week. No anti-spoiler necessary. So happy for that. And, guys, we're going to jump into our next game here. It's going to be Snow versus Light. My God, what a follow-up to an excellent game. Snow, the final Protoss player. From our lineup, the strongest Protoss versus Terran player that we have in the modern era. It's going to be going up against Light here on Dark Origin. What is Light going to bring out against this player with 70% win rate in PVT? What are you even thinking here as Light? You're just going to play your normal game? Or are you just going to try and macro through the... The chaos, the hurricane that's going to be everything that Snow throws at you this game? Or are you going to go for some sort of special tactics here? Try to take down Snow in a, a you know, a unique way with something he hasn't seen before. Well, the answer was to send out a very early SCV, prevent any kind of forward gateway from Snow, and then also take his own gas so it prevents, prevents the steal from uh, Snow as well. So now going to be mitigating any potential rush potential and also denying the gas steal. It's going to try and optimize his build as a result of that and like kind of make Snow have to navigate a game in which he maybe didn't expect and maybe thought he was going to get this gas steal early on. Yeah, I think that is a really great response here to Dark Origin, right? Like, you would expect the uh, Protoss player to uh, steal your gas. And so if you're expecting the Protoss player to steal your gas and you uh, delay your barracks in order to get that gas, uh, you know, prevent that gas from being stolen, maybe you die to a forward gateway. But in order to, to, to stop that gateway, you send out the early SCV. I think this is a great move. Oh, is he going to be able to save <gasps> this? 5 HP. What the, I see. Oh my goodness. That was a crazy, crazy glitch there on that SCV. He will repair this with two SCVs. Keeping that alive is huge right now. Snow, got to be a little bit frustrated not able to get that final particle beam shot. Like 
I think Light was spamming stop and right click to make the SCV glitch through and not not be able to be targetable by the probe because it was just sliding through the other SCV. I was like, I can't, I can't imagine what what Light what was going through Light's brain to calculate how to glitch that. SCV. I'm not even sure that was intentional, but if that's intentional, that's insane, Sam. Yeah, he keeps that alive. He keeps his SCV on the factory alive as well. Such a good opener here by Light, a player like snow is someone who can just dismantle you with his early probe if you're not absolutely on top of your game and light actually dismantling snow a little bit here on his aggression with the early probe very very well done by him he's going to be able to get in here possibly get the scout off we've got the probe on the ramp going to be denying that he sees the gateway on low ground here but he can't get the confirmation on the uh that range right now and with this scv going down snow gonna be able to continue to deny that information here from light yeah so far light winning the uh, early game uh like meta and um skirmishes with um snow and usually you wouldn't expect that snow's the kind of guy that you'd expect to maybe lose to like 70 percent of the time he, he, he's crazy good at this matchup like even the best players could probably struggle to get that kind of win rate against him like he's so exceptionally well versed in not only his ability to control his units but how to abuse these tiny windows where the terrans are at their most vulnerable which are these like transitionary points and in, in every matchup when you're transitioning into like a certain tech path or certain transition in your build order that's where you're at your most weakest and snow's so good at coming in at these tiny little windows like just before this bunker's finishing he comes in and snipes off a marine just like that this is exactly what i'm talking about he's so good at understanding these tiny little windows where he just comes in and abuses you yeah, I think he's really thrown off light here as well because, you know, he did manage to block the scout getting into the main base. And then he also uh, kind of hid his uh, timing here on the Nexus. It's about like 3.30 to 3.45 is when a, uh, a, a 23 Nexus will come down. And when you don't see that Nexus around that timing... Um, it's really going to throw you off here as a Terran player. You might be expecting something like a uh, Templar play, maybe like a really fast reverb because it's not no going to be range. Now he is going to slip by here with the Vulture, no but way. no. Snow finishing that off. Really good, uh, you know, decision making. Good star sense here to send that Dragoon down to the bottom left to actually catch that Vulture as it's being sent over. This is huge. Really, really huge for Snow. I think this is going to force... Uh, light to actually over defend here uh, in his main and natural absolutely and meanwhile snow is just going to be doing like a three gay obs nothing weird here kind of build which is basically like the cookie cutter right get on top of this tank though beautiful connections not quite able to do so though repairing on that tank preventing the double volley shot from those four dragoons finishing off light like barely staying out of the jaws of defeat there but needs to be careful with this other tank now as he tries to get so snow's going to come in again gets a little bit of a shot and not quite getting the four connections that he needs he won't commit to a tank snipe unless he gets the first four shots perfectly on that tank he wasn't able to do so there so he quickly backs out he's got two dragoons on low hp can't afford to lose any dragoons right now he just start recharging shields on those right now make sure he's got enough dragoons to prevent any kind of three to five tank push that could come out of light at this stage in the game with the three gate oh sorry he's only got two gateways he cancelled one okay so he's doing two gate obs into expansion so being a little bit greedy here is snow it's still a very safe opening with the two gate obs but now doesn't have like a guaranteed defense that something that light could throw at him so he does go for these like two three five tank pushes in the early game could actually do some damage here to snow yeah it looks like light hasn't been fooled at all by the early game here from snow you know he didn't uh quickly add on an ebay that i have seen he might have that inside the main base but he's actually pushing out here with like sort of a marine tank play it looks like he's turned around and headed back home he kind of faking that push yeah there's the early ebay so he did actually add on that ebay wasn't certain it wasn't going to be a dt play here um so kind of hiding his build well but seeing the timing on the range he knows that it's not going to be like a super early DT, so he gets the turret out at the time uh, when that DT is possible here. It's going to be uh, the observer play, so now that he sees the uh, observers out here clearing out his mines, he knows that it's not that DT play. Instead, it is going to be just like 2-3 gate goon play into a third base there. He spots the third base as well. This is all great information for Light. He knows exactly where he's at, at this in this game, and that's really half the battle here for the Terran player is actually figuring out what the heck the Protoss player is even doing in the game and he's going to add on this academy now so he can get scans going and kind of check out the main base but 
for now, he really does have a good understanding of what's going on. Exactly so. And Light basically was trying to delay these uh, scanners, these this academy tech, um, as long as possible. Because when you make those scanners, it's like down two SCVs during that time. So he wants to delay that as long as possible to get his economy as healthy as he can. You don't want to delay your SCV count if you can help it. So staying active and reading the game state is so important for Terran because being able to delay that academy and the, the, the commsats for so long just gives him such a stronger economy to fight the Protoss player with. And now with that economy, able to explode up to four, uh, four factors trees worth of production, which is a very aggressive place to be as Terran. It gives you a lot of options. You can both take your third base with this amount of production or put a lot of pressure onto the, the, ter the Protoss player. Meanwhile, Snow going into his namesake uh, Reavers to try and uh, put on some pressure while also simultaneously delaying the move out of the Terran player. Coming forward here with that first Reaver. Looks like he's heading actually towards the natural here. Is he going to try to hit the bunker? Is he going to try and find some damage in the main? Light pretty well bunkered down here as those four Goliaths, uh, the key uh, to blocking a lot of these newfangled shuttle plays. Four Goliaths will two-shot a shuttle and pick that off very, very quickly. What are we upgrading right now? Is this a plus one a, a attack for a carrier? Is he going to go into a carrier play from here? That would be a little bit interesting from Snow. He's picking up his Reaver. He's getting some damage here in the main. He hasn't lost the shuttle yet. Oh my god. The shuttle going down to almost no HP. That is crazy that he managed to get out there. Seven health on that shuttle. Absolutely insane that he managed to get in there, get that damage, and get out again. Well, Light is also quite naturally good at drop defense because he himself is a very drop-centric player. Back in the day, um, every Protoss on his team had amazing anti-drop play because that's all he would do is Vulture drop against Protoss players. So all the Protoss players on his team would always have like goons waiting in the main base at the timing that the, the dropship would arrive. And all these other Protoss players that weren't privy to the practice house of Light just got absolutely decimated by it. Well, here, he's not going for any drop play. Just solid macro from Light is what we've come to know him for in the modern era. He's looking to possibly take this third base here soon. Has the armory spinning. Does not have even a starport here right now. But he should be adding that on relatively soon. So that he can continue these upgrades and get into that late game mech play that he is so well known for here. Now... An observer coming forward. If he spots that, he could shut that down. It would be a big kill here to get that first observer. Uh, and I think he will go for that. Looks like he just barely doesn't get it. Oh my god, 3 HP on that. He really, really wants it here, though. He's trying to go for it. He will pick off the shuttle, though. Really nice snipe there on the shuttle. Going to deal some damage to these Reavers as well. But unfortunately, losing a tank there, not getting either of the Reavers. A little bit of a bad trade for Light. Yeah, that's why you see these Terran players always get those four Goliaths. It's the magic number to two-shot these shuttles and one-shot these observers. He was a bit unlucky that, that time there. The observer barely surviving because of lack of connection, but it's just so efficient to go for this like perfect count of four Goliaths. Um, you can just really optimize the tools in your arsenal as Terran player with these like perfect counts of units. And I think Terran players are starting to figure out the game enough where we see the likes of people like Snow um, struggle a little bit more against them, but it's, it's, it's still hard to contend with someone like Snow's ability to control Reavers the way he does. There's no one really that can do it like he can do it, and not even any, any legs upgrade on these Zealots. So this Vultures can actually snake over to this um, expansion left-hand side and frustrate this cannon going up by shaving off all the HP, get onto the left-hand side, kill some probes, and also maybe lay down some lines if he wants to, but he can't actually because the goons are on the left-hand side screening them, so instead they're going to be caught by these Zealots just as the speed kicks in, going down to just one vulture and it's actually really bad for light because you don't want to bleed off too many vultures it kind of gives a lot of wind in the sails of the protoss player to just come into a big zealot goon force and overwhelm you if you haven't got enough vultures to soak up that big clump of zealots that are just going to run into you this map specifically it is very hard to break a terran player on three bases though with that uh, kind of bridge mm. setup here yeah he's going to be feeling pretty secure with a bunch of mines turrets and tanks sitting there he should be okay for now. Fourth base on the map. It's not going to be very viable for him to push out right now. Snow's identified that. He's identified it's going to be pretty simple, pretty easy for him to go ahead and, uh, you know, take a fourth base here. Because it's very unlikely that with all the vultures that have gone down, that Light will actually be able to push across these bridges and deal 
uh, you know, get out into the middle of the map, deal with this army, and try to push that forth. So I think Snow really understanding the game state well here. He's got triple uh, shuttle moving around this uh, left side, but there's two turrets here. That is such a weird position to drop two turrets. He's going to lose one of the... Uh, shuttles here before he even gets into the main and look at that reaver gets taken down by one of these uh mines here and he almost loses that second shuttle it's so close to going down it's got a reaver inside but it can't really do too much more damage it'll get a couple more shots off get some more vultures actually getting an uh, inordinate number of kills here uh wow. for the health that it actually has maybe like nice. what six five yeah, vultures nice. went down that's crazy targeting there from uh f from snow but look at this he's gonna transition into a two carrier play two starport carrier from here and he's had this uh, these upgrades rolling for quite some time he's gotta have plus two on the way by now so he's gonna come out with some carriers if light doesn't scout this he's gonna have like you know three of uh, four five six carriers coming out with plus two plus three maybe uh, online here very very soon Oh, exactly. Saying right now, Light has like a, a three to like three and a half minute window where he needs to actually mount an attack and actually execute it. And right now, he doesn't know that, so that's a big problem because he's not making the preparations that he needs to to deal with the threat of Snow right now. So if he doesn't identify this carrier threat within the next two minutes or so, he won't have enough time to slowly, methodically push out onto the map and actually counter it. So right now, it's really dire for Light because every second that ticks by is another is another small percentage hit to his win condition. Yeah, he is slowly pushing out here. Getting across these bridges is the main task. It's so difficult uh, against a Protoss player right now. There's going to be a counterattack coming down here, but the little supply depot wall plus the mines and vultures here are going to really frustrate that, make it really hard. And I think that Light actually might be feeling a bit of... Um, he might be having some, you know, questions in his mind right now. Like, why is Snow allowing me to get across this bridge? Okay, never mind. Snow is giving him some some trouble here. He is uh, kind of frustrating this push across the bridges. And he's getting his army in position to maybe shut this down. A lot of zealots here just taking a straight-up fight with the vultures is not the greatest. Dragoons are going to fall back here. He doesn't want to lose all of his ground army right now. He needs to keep this alive. Oh, God. Big mistake here from Snow. He's microing somewhere else. He loses about five Dragoons there, kind of for free. That is not what you want to do. That might be actually the bit of a swing that Light needs to get out here on the map and, and make a push happen right now. Losing those extra five Dragoons was a big mistake. Yeah, this is the trigger that Light needs. He needs to go, needs to go now. And there's enough time for him to get across the map and actually still deal with the carrier threat. It's just he needs to do it exceptionally quickly. He needs to come out all the way to this western uh, side, get on top of this fourth base and put a lot of pressure. He might catch the probe transfer, actually. He looks like he's going to scoop up some of those probes in the shuttle. Wise little uh, um, quick reaction there from Snow to save the majority of his uh, economic uh, transfer there. And meanwhile, it looks like Light is going to be itching his way to this fourth base location. He can maybe not only put pressure onto this fourth base but also cut off this bottom left and take out two for one but the problem is if he doesn't know about this carrier threat he's going to be thinking that he's in a great position but meanwhile he's actually on a clock and and eventually snow is just going to whack him with like a three to six carrier surge so this could be a real dire situation like he doesn't identify it soon yeah he is uh pushing forward here pretty well he's doing this a bit slowly though where snow really doesn't have that much army he shouldn't be able to slow it down this much he's going to pull his probes away and send them, I think, over towards the top right. And just having some mining around the map is all that Snow needs at this point. He just needs some mineral income somewhere. Here down in the bottom left is great. Over at the top left, if he can manage it, it's going to be fantastic. He's escorting these probes over towards the top right. Um, he just needs money for, you know, continued carrier production and some interceptors. And, you know, if he doesn't have this base in the center left, I think he's going to be fine with that as long as he keeps his carrier production going. Then he's getting back up to a max. I think he's got to have at least four carriers by now, maybe even more. He's got three Stargates, I think. So he's going to have three, three, three carriers, and then he's going to go up to six. And that's the magic number. Four is enough to fight. Six is enough to start to really chip away at the Terran player. So with that six carrier count that he will be going up to soon as these other three Stargates finish up their production, he's going to explode out onto the map with those carriers. And once he gets up to nine, it's probably going to be lights out for Light. Light is playing a great game against a normal Protoss setup. This is not a great game against what Snow's actually doing. And that's the problem right now. Light thinks he's in a great position, and he's really not. 
I don't see that many Goliaths here, Shun. I think that we are in big, big trouble. I'm gonna drop some Templar here just to buy a bit of time. Try to slow down this uh, tank push down towards the bottom left. It will eventually kill this base. But I don't see this as a really a super big deal here for Snow. He has mineral mining in the top right. He has his third base and his natural steel mining. All he needs is just a little bit, just a tiny bit of mineral income to keep these interceptors going. And he's going to dive on top of a bunch of tanks here in the middle of the map. This five carrier force here making its way down. He's actually going to try and save the base in the bottom left. I don't know if this is the greatest choice. I think he could have killed a bunch of tanks here in the middle if he had just gone straight for them. Well, I think he wants to snipe off the vessel and then get on top of the uh, the Goliath count that's already down here. These four Goliaths here and start shaving off the Goliath count instantly. It might be a wise choice for him. Um, but yeah, right now Light did a good job of like melting these bases on the left. But right now Snow's falling on top and he needs to be careful. Light has done a great job of putting a little counter attack in this top right. Frustrating the, the economy in the top right corner with those vultures. But look at all these tanks just left undefended. He hasn't got the kind of factory count that he needs to pump out so many Goliaths that he can just walk over these these carriers so right now he's going to be having a field day these are like ducks in the bottom of a barrel and they're just quacking away while getting decimated this is this is oh, i thought your gaze terran players this is brutal yeah this is so punishing right now not having the goliath count is going to cost light this game no doubt having a uh you know no fourth base online here he finally scans up there and sees where the carriers were being produced i think he's just seeing that for the first time and he is going to be completely off guard here so many tanks have gone down and even more are about to fall he's actually pushing forward here whereas his rallies are coming up from behind and just getting picked off one by one here comes some more goliaths but this is just a losing battle here snow is going to take this game he's killing so many tanks right now oh my god the uh this mass of tanks that has been slowly built up here by the Terran over the entirety of this game is just completely useless here against the mass carrier that has been brought out by Snow and even more carriers making their way to the front here. This force is unstoppable. Eight carriers. I don't even see what the upgrades are though. Uh, right now, but that, I mean, they've got to be really, really good here. GG is finally called. He had double... Uh, Cybernetic Core for quite a long time, and he started that plus one upgrade on the Cyber Core like right after he finished uh, range. I feel like really, really yeah. soon after finishing that range. So this was in the mind of Snow from the beginning of the game. A great hidden tech play there from him, hiding the carriers up there at the twelve o'clock. Oh, great game from Snow, man. Light has got to be sour about that one though. Oh, he's definitely gonna be sour about that. He had two two grades as well. Wasn't even at three three. And I think he probably would have had like two but two one or two two on those carriers. And maybe even a shield upgrade. Maybe even two one two or at least two one one. Like either way, crazy good grades and way too much for Light to handle. Epps, crazy game. Like Snow had that game state on lock, and Light the entire time was convinced he understood what was happening, and he was playing a great game from his side of side of things. He thought he was in a commanding position. Meanwhile, the entire entire time snow just was landing on top of him in the the game the grand scheme of things they're saying phenomenal play how how good do you have to be as a protoss player to where light doesn't even realize that you're building three uh stargate carriers he's, he's looking at your right. army he's just like oh yeah this is this is what snow should have you know this is this is about the right number of units but actually he's already got exactly. way more money uh being spent into carrier you don't even realize that that's happening um, that is insane, dude. Snow is so, so good, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know how you, you even deal with someone like him. I don't think there's any Terran player that has Snow figured out, like, in any sense of the word. And if Snow's performing at his A game, I really don't see any Terran player beating him in, like, on, on statistics. I feel like Snow's always going to inch ahead to, like, 60, 70% win rate against a lot of these players. I just, I can't see them being able to figure him out at this point in time. He's just got the, the matchup on lock. Let's go. Final game of the night here. Snow versus Action. No need for that score screen anymore. The, the uh, lineup is clear here. One final game with Terran already being knocked out. 
Again, taking home zero points, man. Taryn just having such a rough season, but I hardly even care right now. This has just been such a good day of games, man. It's just been so back and forth. So many great, great showdowns between these awesome players. Yes, and honestly, I feel like no matter what race you represent or are rooting for, it's hard It's hard to deny just the quality of StarCraft we're witnessing right now. And I feel like even if the guy you want to win isn't winning, I feel like you're still going to be blown away by the quality of games here. So I hope you guys are having a great time because we certainly are, aren't we, sir? Yes, we absolutely are. And this should be a fantastic game as well. We've got Action here who is super hungry for, you know, ASL4. Uh, you know, well, good performance in the upcoming tournaments here. He has been grinding away like a madman and has looked fantastic in his late game as well as his early game control and decision making. We'll see if it's good enough to take down Snow here, who has also been grinding away like crazy. Guys, you got to check out Snow's stream sometime, by the way. Uh, he's got a, a very cute little young... Uh, son, who's often, you know, messing around outside of his door, and uh, I've seen him streaming quite a lot recently. He's grinding like crazy. He's a dad. He is a family man, and he is a StarCraft player through and through. This guy is an absolute beast, and always a pleasure to watch him play. I mean, one of the more fascinating titles under his belt is probably Foot Clapper, I would say. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the, uh, essential, the, the kind of, uh, most memorable celebra celebratory move from any player we've ever seen, the foot clap, uh, just, uh, bringing out the style, honestly, and I'm just kind of blown away right now by his control here with the probe actually blocking this drone from moving forward like three or four times here and almost picking it off. Action got to be getting a little bit frustrated here, not even able to bring his, uh, drone to bear, not even able to bring his drone out here to actually take this base. Things are not looking good here for Action starting off in this game. He's going to start popping out some links. He's got his gas going, but uh, he hasn't been able to throw down this third, and he actually needs to get this down here pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm, uh, one thing I would like to point out is that I'm not too surprised by Snow's ability to control this the way he's doing. He, he has such dexterity over all four of his uh, chimp-like feet, and no wonder he's, he, he claps with them because he's just got such good control over all four paws, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, look at this action. Uh, mind gas, and he doesn't have a layer. So he actually, I think, went into Ling speed here, and he's popping out a lot of Lings. He's kind of feigning that he really wants to get this hatchery down and that Snow's really got him in a bad situation here by, you know, not allowing him to get that. But he's popping a lot of lings right now and the forge is not done. We don't have a cannon here. Luckily, Snow's brought back uh, all his zealots. So he's got three zealots here to hold off this wall, but he's going to take a lot of damage on this gateway and more and more lings are coming forward here and speed is about to finish. There it is. Speed finishes. He runs by immediately here into the main. He's got three lings behind the wall. And that's all he needs to dive on top of a cannon once it starts finally getting thrown down here. Oh, he runs out! That is a surprise. I did not expect to see him run out here with the links. What was that? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's okay. So right now he's doing a, a hydra follow up. So he, what he wants to do is get some hydras to finish snow off. He needs to make sure he maintains his link count while also simultaneously going to be then, then target firing down the gateway, then goes back into the main base because he knew the timing of the cannon would be so slow and is now going to frustrate snow while also switching into a 973 bus. So it's actually really like hyper high level from action that we're seeing and action is coming. I mean, Snow is in a world of hurt right now because he's not going to expect this powerful, potent 973 timing because he didn't see the den go down. The, the, the pro popped just as he was throwing down the den, so he won't be aware of this follow-up. He might be thinking that Action's droning hard behind this and won't be doing any kind of timing. And look how late this Stargate is. He's not going to be able to identify this threat anytime soon, so he has to kind of guess. And the situation where you're guessing, at the very best, you're hedging your bets as Protoss, and that's not a position you want to be in. So at the very least, Action's in very strong control of this game for the time being and even just bowler him over as soon as this 973 hits yeah he didn't send out anything snow didn't like send a probe or anything out on the map uh once the lings ran by he was just too focused on dealing with these lings here at the front and 
more links are being produced with hydras following up behind that even if there was a pro bot on the map it would have a high chance of actually being denied from getting over there um this is this is almost a 100 percent loss here for snow i think unless he's just building cannons on pure star sense here i think he's just gonna be pushed right out of this game he's got two cannon that's it that's not gonna be enough to hold on the only thing you can do as Protoss here is, like I said, hedge your bets, start morphing in the cannons and then cancelling them at like 99% when you don't need them. But he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to min-max to that degree. He wants to try and save as much as possible. makes a Dragoon even to try and help deal with the Lings in the main base. But it's not going to be enough because now here comes the Hydras getting on top of these cannons as the Lings in the main base help this offensive uh, take place. And now the other cannon could be targeted down by these Hydras. Cannot mount a strong enough defense. Has enough Zealot Probe to fight off the follow-up force of the Zerg. But doesn't matter because now action is going to start hammering at this wall. He has just barely enough infantry to challenge this, though. Coming out with these probes off the line to try and frustrate these hydras in their small number. Does catch one of the hydras, though. Not able to kill it, but good effort from Snow here, trying to use as much of his forces to his ability to try and get on top of the hydra cat and prevent it from getting too big and out of control. But he's losing his infantry slowly but surely, and now going to be getting on top of these cannons is action. He has a, a, it co clocked in his head exactly when the, the cannons will be morphing in. A good Zerg player knows the timing on those cannons, so he'll be just killing them at the last possible second like we see here and buying enough time for his rallied units to get across the map and uh, be enough of a tempo swing that snow can't stabilize oh dude the ling follow-up is so genius here building like six hydra to go for the attack oh my god look at this surround wait a second action did not pay attention to those units he just lost like uh, what was that five lings and a hydra there and he doesn't right. have hydras following this up i mean they might be coming across the map now but he built like pure ling to follow this up so that he could kill those cannons and you know keep the pressure on here but another zealot gonna pop out these cannons are getting close to finishing snow is still in a really bad position he's lost a lot of probes here but maybe the cannons warp in in Great. time. Are you kidding me right now? Great positioning of these pros by Snow. His control is next level. He must be using his feet and his hands simultaneously to increase his precision right now. This is absolutely off the chain what we're seeing from Snow. He's kind of stabilized himself from the draws of defeat despite them clamping down on him. I'm actually blown away by him. He's going to lose his gateway at the front preventing any more zealots from popping out and soaking up these Hydra shots. There is still a positional disadvantage as these cannons on the left will not be able to, to hold well against this Hydra's if he wants to he can pounce now and get these two cannons he's gonna do that he has the timing now he can kill both of these two cannons and start to chip away at the ones on the left if he wants to but he doesn't have enough hydras to do so he might just barely not get this cannon on the left in time he does just snipe it with his two hydras left by the forge now he can come in and snipe this other cannon off and get on top of snow beautiful target firing and timing by action he's fully aware of the game state right now and is doing his best to navigate it he's trying to get on top of these cannons one at a time as they warp in and try and frustrate the position of snow because even though he's got these two cannons up on the right hand side the left flank is exposed so now the forge will go down snow desperately trying to find as many cans as he can to stabilize this small pocket of defense that he's got holding on by a thread right now trying to use the probes to zone out the hydras from getting to position to snipe these two cannons right now snow's hanging by a thread and snow action is trying to bite through it it's about gonna snipe that cannon just barely and they're gonna start targeting these other cannons down that are now exposed i don't think snow can hold this position he's barely gonna get this other cannon warped in but it's enough hydras to overwhelm saying yeah, my God, this is such a butt clencher here, guys. The cheeks are tight right now on Snow. I can guarantee you that. He is just barely hanging on. He gets another cannon up, but with more hydras coming and no forge here, he can no longer build cannons to try and reinforce his position. I don't think he even has the money to do so anyway with so many probes being pulled to try and hold on. GG is finally GG. called. Action takes this final game, so <laughs> game away. It claps those cheeks, man. God damn, that's got to feel good here. After being harassed so heavily in the early game as a Zerg player, I know how great it feels to bust through a Protoss player. You know, they're, they're just being so cocky, just, you know, hitting you over and over again, delaying your hatcheries, frustrating your attempts to get into a reasonable mid game and so you just bowl them over early you turn the aggression back onto them and win a game like that very well done by action here to finish this off i'm sad that we didn't see a long game uh between action and snow because i think that would have been insanely epic both these players so so good in pvz late game but i'm really glad that we got a nice 
finisher here with some, you know, really tense uh, moments there with the, the hold of that natural. Finally, Snow getting taken out crazy. Yeah, I mean, on the contrary, saying I'm really happy that we saw a very technical 973 bus like that. That is the modern style to go for a lower Hydra count and then pure link follow up mm. to kind of soak and overwhelm the position. But Snow just did such a great job of stabilizing the position and show just how defendable it is, despite like all hope being lost. And uh, wow, I I'm kind of speechless by the quality of games we've had this evening. Like the the, the Starcraft's been absolutely out of this world, and it almost feels like these these players are like they're not just players. You know, they actually are creating stars with the amount of artistry that's being woven on the like the digital like network that these players are like like interfacing with I'm, surely there's something deeper to this game that we're not privy to as mere mortals well guys a fantastic week of brood war here of kzm and i think these games speak for themselves i don't have anything else to say about uh, all of these amazing amazing nines or tens that we've had Back to back to back here in week six of the KCM. Do you, Shun? <laughs> Absolutely saying. I think the games speak for themselves as far as that's concerned. Uh, looking at the board, though, we see Protoss kind of not quite breaking out into the stratosphere as we maybe were anticipating, but they still have this four point lead over Zerg, 10 to 6. So bar some crazy blunders in week seven and eight where they get absolutely no points, it's going to be a Zerg versus Terran semi finals, which I'm super excited for. Uh, how do you feel about that? Zerg versus Terran semifinals. I'm all for it. I love Zerg versus Terran. Whoever takes that game. I'm assuming it's going to be Zerg just based right. on, you know, the results that we've had from Terran so far. But, you know, anything can happen in those semifinals. I would much prefer to see ZVP, semi or ZVP finals, but the TVP will not be uh, disappointing either. I think that uh, things are going to be a little bit chaotic here going into these semifinals and finals though as ASL is just about to begin uh, for example in two weeks we're going to have week number eight and that's going to clash with our uh, group C here for the ASL uh, hero killer mind and stork so likely we won't see those players in that final week of the regular season of KZM and then we're going to be wrapping up the KZM on the 13th of March, so well into the uh, season of ASL. So we'll see what other clashes there might be, guys, but things are really ramping up here. You can see that all the players are super dedicated to their craft. They're super ready and, you know, getting fully prepared, fully invested in this new season of the ASL, and the KZM is just going to benefit from that. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here this week. It's been an absolute pleasure. Shun, thanks for being here with me today, guy. It's been almost a it year. Almost, yeah. it's, almost, it's been almost <laughs> yeah. a year of KCM, man. What a great way to round out a year of casting together. I mean, honestly, like I couldn't have wished for a better, happy, happier Valentine's Day. Um, so happy Valentine's Day, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure of a year casting with you, for you guys. And we hope to bring you more and more great games in the future. Yeah, love is in the air, guys. Love for Brood War. Love for each other. Thank you, brothers. See you next time.